<laughs> rapid massive. fire. It's massive. Huge. On his face, he knows that was a big one. Yes, guys, a massive welcome, table take this family to the ping pod in Bristol, England, where we bring you today match day six of the senior. British League Premier Division. Thank you so much for being with us. Whether you're watching on YouTube or TTE.TV, we are looking forward to bringing you a match from the gold standard of table tennis here in the UK. And my oh my, the TTD have a tough task ahead of us today because we welcome the league leaders, Ormsby Table Tennis Club, into the pod and Ormsby are not taking TTD lightly. They have brought the big guns, bringing three international players looking to secure all points on offer to continue their march towards the playoffs and towards the titles. Let's have a look then at the league table. You can see really tight at the top, Ormsby currently sit at the helm on sets difference, closely followed by Brighton and Bats. TTD currently sitting at position six, following a loss away to Bats on the last match day. If you want to check out any of the other teams or even TTD's away matches, the only place to check them is TTE.TV. And following completion of all the league matches the league is actually then split in half I mentioned it earlier the top four teams go through to the semi-finals to decide who will be crowned the senior British League Premier Division champions TTD's chances of sneaking into the top four to get into those semi-finals looking very slim indeed we would have to pull off a monumental performance today but quite literally every point counts team lineups then for today let's start with team ttd at position number one leading the team off is the welsh dragon callum evans he'll be looking to land that massive forehand today and breathe fire to set the court alight position number two is the frog tom maynard fresh off taking two big wins against north Ayrshire, our last home match as the beast said at the time froggy's on fire He's going to need to be again today to have any chance of taking points against Ormsby. And there he is in at number three, rounding the team off is the founder, Dan Ives. He's stepping up today in place of the injured Pocket Rocket, who we wish a very speedy recovery. It's a massive step up in com uh, competition for the founder to come into a team at the last moment to face the league leaders. But can he rise to the occasion and possibly pull off what would be a massive upset. You're going to have to stay tuned to find out. And then our opponents, the juggernauts of British table tennis, Ormsby Table Tennis Club, currently sitting top of the table, have brought some mesmerizingly good table tennis talent down to the south of England today. In position number one, it's England's number five, David Macbeth, fresh off of playing the WTT feeder event in Manchester last weekend, where he actually got to the final with the men's doubles. He's here at the pod, no doubt determined to take his two singles wins back north with him. Position number two, a Portuguese top 15 player, Ennio Mendes, very, very explosive, very slick player who's going to be hard to beat today. Position number three, the youngster, current England junior number two, Ben Piggott. He's made some massive strides in his game recently, training full-time in Sweden. He has more than earned his first spot in the league leaders team. I'm going to throw it straight down because we are ready to start. And Enio, straight away, long serve and a bang up the line. As always, guys, I'm going to have eyes on the comments. Big point already. Oh. Enio with the big full hand. So I'm in the comments, guys. Shout me out. Where are you watching from around the world? Okay. 
immediately. Enio looking good off both wings, attacking forehands and backhands. Oh, great counter backhand. What have we got going on in this comments? Lee says, hello, hope you are well. I am doing very well, Lee. Joe Marla, well done to Callum on getting up to number two in the Welsh rankings. Cheeky comment there, Joe Marla. I love it. Watching from the USA, from Romania, Northamptonshire. Oh, Uzbekistan, Nova Scotia, Germany. Watching from Copenhagen. Lee's up in Falkirk, Hong Kong, Belgium, Uzbekistan. Great to know that we've got such an international community. Callum then, slow and spinny, backhand up the line into the forehand. Enio just kicking it long. Important for TTD to try and at least put a little bit of damage on the league leaders early doors. And then bringing it back to five all. We've got more places Germany, Thailand, Chicago, Philippines, Czech Republic, Slovakia, Belgium, Denmark, Central America. Spinning from Enio. See a comment from Ben asking about the feeder. Manchester, he saw a wild beastie boy. Yeah, Beast is actually down in the audience. He's going to come down. Uh, you can see him there on the bench. He's going to come into the commentary booth at one point. And you're then taking those last two points. Obviously a very spinny player. Just looking slightly sharper at this point, taking the initiative to get in early, attack as soon as he can. Takes the first set, 11-5. Interesting how table tennis can shift so quick. Enio gets off to a, a quick start. Callum then manages to drag it back to 5 all, and then Enio just upping it a couple of percent uh, to take the set there. What have we got going on in the comments, why isn't the captain playing? Great question. Captain's just taken a slight break. Uh, he's got married uh, in the summer just now. He's, he's uh, yeah, we've seen him a couple of times coming down to support the team. I'm sure it won't be the last time that we see him down here as well. Let's have a look. If TTD get Beast and Dane next season, then top four is on. That is a very, very exciting uh, proposition there new TTD SL season soon unfortunately not the boys uh, because we're playing in the Premier Division as you can see we've just put TTD SL on hold for the time being it takes a lot of effort to run it and obviously as you know edit the videos and, and uh, get them out to you random question thoughts on short pips you know what I think the more variations that we have the better uh, so I've got lots of time for pips for anti for long pips as well have a look. Greetings from Hungary. Hello. Let's throw it back down there. Callum then going to the backhand serve from the forehand side. Let's see it from this angle. Even that kicking through. Enio coming in. He's obviously got a very, very good backhand flick. There's the big forehand from Callum. Callum's starting to try and force that forehand in. 
interesting. Enio seems to have an advantage over the table and anything kind of half long, meaning it's only just coming off the edge. Oh, that is world class. Let's try and see a replay of that. That forehand up the line, absolutely beautiful. See it here. Callum spins up, a look at that short technique from Enio, just short technique, take the, uh, the ball off the bounce. Very difficult game to start off for the Welsh Dragon. Needs to find something to change the momentum. And again, very sharp from Enio. Short technique, always important if your opponent spins up the ball. Oh, he's on fire. Said an apology, maybe there was a slight top edge, but it looked beautiful. Again, short technique, weight forward through the ball. Enio's just looking sharp as attack. That guy is class, I could not agree more, Steph. Very highly ranked in Portugal, and we know what kind of talent they've got. Callum just struggling to find any kind of momentum. I almost wonder with Callum, in this next set you can see so that serve there drifted half long let me try and show you again the serve drifted kind of half long Enio doesn't need to change his feet doesn't need to step in doesn't really need to step backwards to be able to attack it look makes it really difficult and i actually wonder do you just serve long as long and fast as you can try and force him back so at least that way Enio's either got to move backwards which gives callum then more time to counter off or he's not going to move his feet and you might catch him and play off an in interesting tactic when someone seems to be so good at short balls and half long balls is actually just bang the ball long serve receives bang it long at least that way you open up the rally and it makes it a bit more of a 50 50 game Enio is cooking he is Mendes wearing leggings any advantage in wearing them no the only thing I can think of obviously Portugal is a lot lot warmer uh, than the UK um, but we have got the heating on in the pod. So, yeah, I think it's just personal preference, whatever you want to wear. Um, sometimes you can wear them as well. If you're just coming back from, from an injury, you know, groins and hamstrings and things, just keeps your legs a little bit more compact and warm. Let's see them. Alan takes the first point. Slight grin on his face. Struggling on serves. And he attacks from literally everything. He's really good. Yes. Yeah, he's very slick, isn't he? Comfortable off both wings. Comfortable when the ball's short, when the ball's long. See what I mean there? Those, those kind of half-long serves where Enio's just able to get in. Would not be surprised to see Callum just serve a little bit longer. A bit like that. You can see, takes the point. Always a good ploy if your opponent is looking really sharp. Let's just open the rally up. It's good from Enio. See the frog there walking past. No doubt getting ready for his match. stay on this camera we can see the length of Callum's serve here that was going to be half long again slightly better serve again we said it earlier when someone spins up heavy at you you need to lean forward, short technique. Callum taking the punch there, so meaning he hit the ball flat. Oh, it's very good at that as well, Callum. Like underrated. If you spin the ball heavy into his forehand, cross court, he almost does like a half shovely slap. Slight flick of the net. Gives Callum the slight lead, 6-4. What's going on in the Callum? In the uh, comments then, I read, the, uh, I read Becky's comment then saying go on Callum Joe's analysis is amazing oh thank you very much there we go 
Good point. What other teams are still to come to the ping pod? You know what, Lee? I have a uh, future fixtures graphic that I'll load up on the screen after this one. You'll be able to see it. Whoa. That was a bit of the Dane. Swatch it back. Big, long, heavy side spin and top serve. Cross court. And you know with the amount of side spin that you put on it, chances are it's going to come back to your backhand. So you pivot early. Bang! Straight up the line. Beautiful. Let's see then. Can Callum just take one of these? Oh. Great change of pace from Ennio. Once the rally opens up, though, it's a bit more of a of an open playing field. It's a great serve from Ennio. Looks like he's been taking uh, lessons from the TT service guy. Shout out to Craig Bryant on Instagram. Very good at those kickers. Big again from Callum, pivoting instead of taking the backhand. Step into his left and taking the forehand there. And Neo just slowing the game down. Eight all. We got Pocket Rocket in the uh, in the comments. Show him some love, guys. Great point. Callum doing the right thing, trying to find the backhand up the line. Any of them, two match points. The Welsh Dragon with two serves to try and save this third set. Oh, it just flicked the edge, did it? Woo. Must have been one of the finest edges we've seen in the pod. 9-10. But that's sometimes the luck you need against these very good players. Let's go to Cam 2. And Enio takes it. 3-0 to set Ormsby Table Tennis Club on their way to a 1-0 lead in this match. Brings me quite nicely onto the matches that we can expect to see there. So we just saw the Welsh Dragon versus Enio. Enio proving a little bit too strong. 3-0 up next. Match two, Tom the Frog against David Macbeth. So those of you that will be watching MLTT in America, the league will know David already. He hit an absolutely obscene uh, smash return pre-season over there that I think even got shared uh, by SportsCenter. Very, very good player. David, uh, known for his reverse pendulum serve in particular, very, very smooth, uh, and his backhand as well. Then we go into doubles, TTD team versus Ormsby. I would bet my money that that will be the Welsh Dragon and the Frog, because I don't think the founder is going to get another ticket to the doubles after his awful performance we've seen before. And then the founder's on against the England junior number two, Ben Piggott. Uh, and that will be a very, very interesting one. Let's have a look at these comments then. What do we got going on? Can we have a tie in this league? Is there always a winner or loser? It's a very good question. So there is always a winner or loser just because of the number of matches that there are. Love the pocket and his fighting spirit. That is exactly uh, what he's known for. Once he gets showing, once he gets angry, once he gets noisy, we know the pocket is fully firing. Uh, is there a ranking system in England? There is. Yes. Uh, let's have a look. Peak Frog can take out Macbeth. Let's go. Come on, Pocket. We're going to get the drum out and hopefully get it going. Enio was very strong. Good fight from Callum. Yes. Enio, good off both wings. Doesn't really appear to have much of a weakness, does he? Daniel Petit. Hello, lads. Ale. Joe, does Chris Duran not play in the SBL? Have we ever tried to scout him for the TTD team? Ooh, good question. So Chris uh, does. Uh, really good to see him playing regularly because he is, as we all saw with TTDSL and those that play in England, 
uh, absolutely unbelievable player with so much feeling. Uh, he plays for Bats. So actually played the TTD boys in the last match day. You can check that out if you have a subscription to TTE.TV. You can watch that full match and then you'll be able to watch all of Duran's rest of his matches. Chris Duran for TTD, that would be class. Uh, we'll see what we can do. We'll get Founder in the room later on and we'll ask him the question. Um, let's have a look. Great job in Dusseldorf as the ringside announcement. Uh, by the way, it was great to see Bobro and TTD partner together. We always love Bobro. It's my first time meeting him. Uh, yeah, he's obviously a superstar. Very, very nice person as well. So yeah, it was cool to meet him. Uh, I also met Fraser Riley, who is the up and coming commentator, who's I'm sure everyone would agree doing amazing things uh, with WTT. Uh, and yeah, met him at uh, Feeder Manchester last week. Hopefully we can get something cooking for WTT uh, events going forward. Let's have a look. Hi from Siberia. Oh, you must be chilly. I'm just going to throw it down because we've got someone coming into the room and I want to get them set up before we show them on screen. Two seconds. Here he is, is the beast. All right, guys. Beastie boy. <laughs> what are we thinking about this then? Tom the Frog versus Macbeth. What are we saying? It's, I would say it's a hard match for Tom. Mm -hmm. I would say Dave's definitely the favorite. Yeah. But but uh, I've been speaking tactics with Tom and hopefully, uh, yeah. There's that backhand. Better. They've also played each other many times. Yes. They're similar age, so. We've got some love for you in the chat. Look, can we get... Tickets to your future matches, you can. We're based here in Bristol. Oh, it's back. I, I gave David the big build up on his backhand, and yeah. he's already hit two that are absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Yes, but yes, you can get tickets uh, down at the Ping Pod on the Ping Pod app. Uh, you'll see on social media that we uh, advertise them out, and there's a link. Click on the link, you'll be able to reserve a ticket. Uh, and it'd be great to see you guys here. David's reverse serve as well. How heavy is David's reverse serve? It's really heavy. Yeah, absolutely yeah. butchered. I think his flick is also really good. Yeah. He wins a lot of points on his flick directly. Yeah, his uh, his backhand technique is just smooth as silk. Look at that. Oh. It's a massive point. Oh. Oh. Have a look at the replay. Frog got early, pinning David into the backhand, and then switches to the forehand. That ball absolutely fizzing with topspin. Frog did well, though. Keep the pressure on. Oh. Yeah, David looks like he's got so much more time than everyone else. Froggy getting away with one there, just popping that serve ever so slightly up. David's reverse serve, just... His ability to either be able to put straight side spin, top spin, back spin, float from that, really difficult to know what is on the ball. And like you say, he's then got this backhand flick that he comes in on third ball. Super difficult. Oh, they're starting well. Yeah. What have we got going on in the comments? Beast Ben saw you at the feeder. You had a good time. We're going to talk about that in a little bit because yeah. we actually had some fun, didn't we? And there's going to be some videos coming out as well that we can talk about. Uh, Beast, would you like to play doubles with the Dane? Yeah, that would be really fun. That would be good. Maybe we should do a video on that. <laughs> Me and... Doubles TTD tournament. You two would be an absolute nightmare to play against. <laughs> oh. Rockdo playing well. It's a promising start. We know what we get with Frog, though. Consistent off both wings. He's trying to be a lot more aggressive on his backhand as well. And we also call him the doctor because he's got a PhD in tactics. So we know that he's going to try and adjust, try and have a game plan A, B and C to take out David. Beast, we got a comment here. Can we make a video with Danio Faso? Who is Danio Faso? He's like, oh... I would say a wonder kid from, he's uh, Italian, okay. but he lives in France, or 
one of the parents is Italian and he plays for the national team. He's about 13 and he's a very good player. Oh. Bob just absorbing. All right, maybe we uh, take yeah. a little trip. That would be good. A European trip. Luca is currently in the Bristol airport. Good to have you. Hopefully you don't miss your flight. <laughs> no better way to spend some time than watching the TCD boys. And Tom dragging this back to eight all. Got to try and avoid that backhand flick, I think, here. Oh, yeah. oh. Right idea. Tried to surprise him with the fast serve. Two shockers, you heard him say it. The serve long, and then he got in with a good forehand flick and then just missed that, that backhand. That's a good point. You can see when David really slows the ball down and spins it heavy, Tom's just got good enough hands to just keep the ball on the table. Oh! You hit that one like you mean it. Let's have a look. Yeah, David's third ball is very good, isn't it? Yeah. Oof. That's a beautiful forehand. Very nice. And it almost it allows you when you've got uh, when you've developed such a good counter off the bounce to not be scared to let people to spin up to you first, yeah, right? Definitely. So you send a short backspin serve just slightly yeah. off the side knowing they're going to grease it yeah. and spin it up that's exactly what dave did here yeah. he, he served half long hoping that tom would give give a bit of a weaker receive and then he just pummels it. yes yeah very good what's going on joe has a degree in pargarel serve receive Oof. yeah <laughs> <laughs> we're very lucky that that challenge was only to get the ball back on the table because if he was allowed the third ball uh, yeah we would have lost all of those <laughs> yeah you know what was crazy about pargarel serve yeah. is even when you guessed it right, and you're yeah. like, that's backspin. There was almost so much backspin yeah. that you go to push it and it almost ripped your rubber straight yeah. off. Or like the top ones, you'd be like, that's top. I've read it. And it'd be like, ping. You're like, yeah. wow. It's crazy. How is he doing that? I played against him in ETTU Cup, actually. Oh. Did you? Recently. How did you get on? I lost 3-1. Oh, you took a set. Yeah. Oh, good from the frog. Early counter. Yeah, he did well to take a set. Yeah. Again, good from the frog. Tom's showing us he can hold that first backhand, then wait for the counter and counter off that. Oh, another serve long. Hello says, everyone, what's up? Good to have you. Spin up, takes the early lead, 1-3. Is not what you'll need when you're playing England number five. Oh, flicked off the net. be your tactics to playing David? Um, I'd, if I was playing him, I would try to serve either really wide forehand as a lefty or try and get him half long. I try to, that he doesn't, that he doesn't feel comfortable flicking and then getting the first backhand. Long, try to get him. He's a big guy, I'd probably, middle, I'd try to get him middle if possible. That's an amazing Oh, 
always difficult playing someone who's higher ranked than you and you know is a probably fair to say better player than you. You almost try to up your shots by sort of two or three percent and then that's what causes you to miss. A lot of nets in this match. It went long. Brog then. Two serves to try and bring this back to eight all. Hold it well. It was a great serve received from David. He absolutely butchered that. Come on, Froggy. Yeah, you almost can't afford to give David that that pop-up ball there, can you? Too easy. To... Yeah. Oh. Short technique, like a whip. Really goes through the ball nicely. David then cruising 2 new up in this one. So yeah, I, I almost feel like Tom could do with just avoiding anything short to that backhand. Yeah. Play short to forehand, everything else then long to backhand. Just go long yeah. and at least you may eat one or two, but at least it gives you more chance to yeah. see the ball coming at you. I agree. I also think it feels like Tom's rushing slightly yeah. a bit there. That like He needs to slow the game down and play his... Because he's playing to... To Dave's timing. Dave's in control, it feels here. He needs yeah. to try and make his own. Yeah. Agree. What do we got on here? Need some graph from the frog. Maybe a timeout with the chairman. <laughs> oh, if only the chairman was here. He's actually away. Chairman and the tech guy, you know, are away at a vets tournament in okay. London. Oh, nice. So we're going to try and FaceTime chairman a little bit later. Uh, and yeah, we'll, uh, we'll try and get him on the screen for you guys. Love David's reverse pendulum serve. Yeah, it's very slick, very loose. Really accelerates through the ball. If TTD had to sign one Scottish player, who would it be? Who would you say? Personally, I would love to see Rumge would be fun. <laughs> would be very good for the channel he was playing. Yeah, Rumge. Yeah, it's definitely a character. Yeah. You know who mine? Mine would be the absolute bomb maker, Martin Johnson. I'm taking him every day of the week. Yeah, he's a good player. And one. Crowd trying to get some life into Frog. Chairman is out grafting down the trenches, he is. Better from Frog, taking the initiative, pivoting early, spinning up. Always dangerous though, obviously, playing someone of David's quality to spin up. That's a better save receive. Just hammer it long. Please give us a link to your, some of your games at the feeder. You can find them on WTT. Just go on WTT's channel and their recent videos, you'll see them on there. Who did you play in the singles? Stefan Lang. You did. You actually took the place of quite a good player, didn't you? Yeah. Who, who pulled out? T-Mobile. T-Mobile. <laughs> so the public oh, in Manchester were hoping to see a left-handed legend and unfortunately he pulled out and we got you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you did have quite a good game with Mengel though. That yeah. was uh, he's uh, obviously a very tricky Is star. Right? Yeah, yeah. And then you, uh, you did quite well in the doubles, in the men's doubles. Yeah. Who did you uh, come up against? Uh, Tom Jarvis and Macbeth. Actually. Yes, the guy playing right now. The oh. oh, frog. We've not been watching seven one up. Yeah, you came up against uh, Macbeth and fellow English. International Tom Jarvis, who plays for Brighton. Oh, amazing these table times, so it just flips on its head. One ten. Frog then, coming back, taking the third set, 11-1. Much better there from Froggy. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, a little bit more variety, a little bit 
from what I saw at least, a willingness to just play the ball long and avoid that flip. Elias has asked, who was your partner in the doubles? Um, Cheyenne Shiraj. Yes. If you, yeah. Where's Cheyenne ranked in England? No idea. You no know idea? Well, he's, he's, he's probably a top 10. He's very, very yeah. good. Yeah, very handy player. Yeah. Yeah, or does Macbeth tune out sometimes? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's probably a bit of both, a little bit of point A and point B. Um, always easy when you're up 2-0 and you're kind of cruising, you're probably on uh, trying to expend as little energy as possible and then you just get caught. Uh, yeah, very interesting. Where can we watch the Beasts game? WTT channel, yes. From the feeder, they are all on there. Okay. Let's go then. Frog, trying to take this to a fifth set. Oh. Yeah, that forehand counter is a thing of beauty, isn't it? How many hours per week do you train? I train about five hours a day. Good from the top. How many hours a week do you train? Do I train? <laughs> <laughs> You've teed me up there. Um, currently, I'm not training. I'm just playing league matches. Yeah. That's once a week. Yes. David coming right across to short forehand to play that backhand in. Yeah. Oh, technique, that short, rapid technique from David. We saw Dan commentate once in a WTT match. How did that happen? Oh, yeah, that's a very good point. He used to do quite a bit. Um, I think pre-COVID, and obviously COVID then stopped. Uh, and then Dan just so busy here. I'm sure uh, he is always up for working with WTT. Uh, yeah. I think there is hopefully a plan for me and Dan to go work with Adam and work with Fraser at some of the WTT events in the future. So let's see what happens. there with some rapid fire shots. David just able to absorb them. Ah, right idea. Oh. Yeah, Enio liked that one. We're gonna have to watch that one on replay. refusing to take a back step and just cracking it. Look at that. Timeout called. Tom the Frog with it all to do. Four points behind in this fourth set. What have we got going on in the comments? Five hours a day, that's crazy. Yeah, that's what you do, isn't it? Yeah. Who, four and a half, five, yeah. Who tends to be in your training hall as well when you're training? Um, what kind of level of player? So all kinds of le uh, of levels. Who's the best? The best player that's uh, full time in Germany is Ricardo Walter, Apollonia, Danny yeah. Kozol, those type of top yes. hundred guys. Yeah, Ricardo Walter actually having an amazing match against Pitch at yeah. WTT feeder. Went two 0 up and Pitch able to just graft it back three two. Let's have a look. Back to it. Let's answer some of these. When will we see a TTD and Adam Bobro collab video? So there's already a few out there. You can see uh, Dan and Adam play. And if you go back through, I think there's both on TTD and Adam's channels. Good flick from the frog. Uh, but for sure, we want to arrange something uh, in the future. Have you guys ever played with Tom Lodziak? I haven't personally. I'm not aware of Dan. You were doing it. Oh. Good from the frog. Long, fast serve. I'm just bombarding David. What's the beast ranking in the UK? Are you currently ranked in the UK? Because obviously you've been playing uh, in Germany a lot. Yeah. Uh, I played Cardiff Grand Prix, so I'm going to be on the ranking list. But to be honest, I don't uh, focus too much on the English ranking. Yes. I, I haven't been on that in a while. 
That's a good receive from the frog there. Not touching short into that backhand. That is a really dangerous position. Just banging it long. David's done it again. Frog reading the half long, getting in early. David just really comfortable countering. What's the beast's real name? Doing well. Dragging this back. Pongfinity collab needs to happen. Yes, it definitely needs to. Yeah, we want to do it. Those guys want to do it. It's just about working out the details. Great counter. Similar to what David did earlier. Sending a half long serve into the forehand, knowing they're going to attack it and you counter off. Eight all. Flick of the net. Lovely disguised serve though from David. You can't really see where that ball's going. It just fires out long. Good receive again from the frog. So again, not touching into that backhand. Yeah. We don't want David anywhere no. near leaning over the table. Play it into forehand. That's good. Good placement. Frog's done really well to get back into this. Hopefully he can take this into a juicy fifth set. Spinny. And he's done it. Absolutely loaded. What a timeout. What was that? 3-7 down. All the way back. Really heavy spin. Beautiful from the frog. Dragging it to the fifth set. Tom's grafting in there. Favourite venue we've been to this year. Well, I was very lucky and got to go to Dusseldorf last week. And that was like for any of you football fans going to like the new camp for Barcelona or the Bernabeu. And the most strangest thing happened is we were there and uh, I'd gone to the front desk to go and check in because they've got a hotel on site. And someone walked up next to me and just said, you are right?" And it was Dmitry Ofterov. Oh. I was like, oh, hi, Dima. How are you? <laughs> yeah. So that place, in fairness, is slightly better than the, the pod. Yeah. Yes. Beast, you mentioned Apollonia earlier. Yeah. Mm. yeah, you know those guys quite well, right? Yeah, they train at my club. Yes. Good yeah, you were out for some food with them at Feeder in Manchester as well, right? Yeah, we went to watch the uh, City match. We did, yes. I'm a Man United fan, so I cannot yeah. <laughs> uh, condone that. Absolutely crazy place. Yes, Joe Marler, Hurricane TT, those who do not know, in 11 VR. I think he's currently world number two or three. He was out in Dusseldorf as well. Oh. Oh. Oh you saw from David there though Frog sending the serve into short forehand David coming right the way round to play the backhand Frog definitely would have realised that that one better into middle Frog definitely would have realised that takes an early two point lead Tom definitely has more confidence again first yeah I felt he didn't Long the lead he could in the first set. And long was... receive there. Just banging it long. We don't even want to play that short backhand flick. Timeout called from Ormsby to try and get this back under control. And we saw how well the timeout worked for Tom in the fourth set. Is it going to have a similar effect for David? From very clever though. Always, always watching for patterns, recognising where balls are being played to and then always switches it up. So I wouldn't be surprised if he sends another short serve into forehand, sees if David is going to uh, try and commit, come across it and play the backhand. I wouldn't be surprised. David did really well with the long serve to the backhand. I wouldn't be surprised if Froggy sent one long yeah. up the line into yeah. the forehand, knowing that he's going to catch David stepping in on it. Yeah. This is amazing reversal of fortune. Table test is crazy, isn't it? Yeah. Just mix up. Kelvin says hello from Indonesia. Hello. <laughs> you join us at the perfect point. Froggy has dragged this back to the fifth set and has a 3 nil lead. Although facing here, one of the best servers in the league without doubt. <laughs> Looked like an obviously short float serve. Froggy just... Doing well enough to not pop it to the ceiling. David then struggling on the flick in. 4 0 up. Good from the frog there. Pocket Rockets in the chat. He is. Surely. Massive. 
World class there from Froggy. Let's check it out on the replay. Frog then gets to turn it around, but look at this. Short to forehand and heavy That's spin. Ah. Beautiful placement. Frog then takes the early advantage in this fifth set. One to five. Has to take one of these two points, you feel. Right idea. David saves one. Six two. Beast just pressed the, the uh, mute button and said, the frog's playing ridiculous. <laughs> Six two up. Job's not done yet. Massive point. The frog here doing really well because he took a step off. When you take a step off, you're going to take the ball later, but spinning the ball really heavily spinning it. Look, spin. Taking it after the peak. Very good. Spinny backhand open up, causing Macbeth problems. It is. It's on the fish. This is going to be a very big point in the match. Yes. This point is important. I love about David, he always is calm and collected. Oh, it's a great receive. Straight away on the back foot. Let's have a look at it. We join it already. Frog just pinning Macbeth in that backhand, refusing to take a step back. Massive. I'm so nervous for Frog. You know what? We got so many comments on the New York video that just went out where it's yeah. just, and they say, do you think that guy was nervous? Because you yeah. say it about 10 times. Yeah. <laughs> Frog then has to take one of these two. Oh. Yeah, it's too good from David. You see the counter in here. I'm going to try and show you it if we have enough time. Look at the counter in here from David. This one, bang. Beautiful. Always important to not be too static. Is this live or is it a pre-recorded video? NX Fly. This is live. Nervous. Great receive. Flick of the net. Slight bit of luck. See if Tom the Frog tries to dump this next receive long. Yep. Yes. The beast is in here showing. Called it. Tom the Frog is so world class at tactics. Yeah. Good serve. Get in. Gives him three massive match points here. Mental monster could not agree more. What a turnaround this match. Still though, work to do. Oh. See how much that ball kicks sideways. Again, David, if you let him play a backhand over the table. Very, very strong. David then. Two serves to try and save this. The frog. Pretty much certain he cannot play anything short the backhand. Cannot Come afford on. to. Can go Come short on. forehand or go long backhand. Got in. Oh. Take your time. How many times have we seen that point? David just baiting the top spin at a frog, knowing it's going cross court and just counters. Massive. Oh. Flick of the edge. What a point. Let's watch it back. What a point these guys played. Frog getting early, taking the initiative. Look at that. Flick of the edge. Margin so, so tight. Oh. 
Oh, massive point. Forehand to forehand. David takes it to set up a match point for himself after saving. This is insane. Massive backhand. The frog coming in, taking the opportunity and then hitting the next one through it. Absolutely huge. Okay, everybody calm. <laughs> got goosebumps. Play the frog. Oh, look at the flick from David. Such a nice backhand. Short float, it pops. David comes in with a flick. Holds his composure. Look at him. It's like he's just waiting at the bus stop. Massive fight from the frog. Unfortunately, couldn't get it done. David just proving slightly too clean. What a match, though. Crazy match. That was absolutely insane to see the frog call that timeout, bring it all the way back to the fifth, have match points. David somehow finding a way to save it. The comments are going absolutely wild. Yeah. What a match. Absolute madness. We need a break after that. Yeah. That was really good. The pocket supporting from his home. Gutted for the frog. Deserved to win this. He did so well. So, so well. Couple of nets and edges. Yeah. Slight just wrong placement sometimes of when you spin up and that's how close it is. Massive. Let's show you then what's up next. We are going to the doubles. Team TTD versus Ormsby. Two of their best versus two of our best. And we'll see who can pull it out. Yes, guys. So we just want to take a quick break from this stream to shout out to our partners, BetterPlay.ai. Now, BetterPlay is an awesome website which highlights your full match down to just the points played. We're going to be using the software to edit this stream and release it as a highlight form, so stay tuned for that. So guys, if you want to improve your table tennis today, head over to betterplay.ai or click the links in the description for more. It's almost time to say bye to the beast. Just seen a comment, David only does one serve, reverse to the forehand. The difficulty is, it's so difficult to know what spin he's put on it. So whether it's just side, whether it's side and back, side and top, float, but also he's able to put that ball anywhere on the table and he has the joy of knowing his backhand flick is so much better than everyone else in the league, which makes receiving it so hard. Yeah. Beast, are you going to love us and leave us? Yeah, I'm going to leave you guys. I've got coaching duty now. You got, oh, yeah, into yeah. the doubles. Yeah. Well, pleasure to have you, man. We'll see you back up Cheers, here, hopefully guys. before the end. Yeah. All right. What have we got going on in the comments? We got B Senior asking the beast, what time does he need to be picked up? Hello for Indianapolis. Love TTD and hello the beast. Hello. He's just gone, but he'll be looking at the comments. Looks like a tragic result for the frog. I know. And sometimes these are the most frustrating ones, right? To get so close to pull it all the way back. Um, David, very, very good though. Showing his class. Showing his class. I'm going to throw you down. You can see the Ormsby team. Look at the beast. There he is. Everybody, I think, saying the same thing. What a match. Absolute madness. Do a masterclass with David Macbeth on his backhand flick and his reverse serve. That is a great show. I might go down and try and have a word with him and see if we can get him up here. What equipment does Tom and the Frog 
use. Well, we're trying to get Froggy up here. Being a Steger player, he uses Steger equipment. Sharp eyes uh, will see that he plays with the Cyber Shape. But yeah, we're going to try and get him up here in the booth. Uh, he's going straight into doubles because between you and I, we don't trust the founder in the doubles. So he's got to go straight in and play that. And then hopefully we'll get a gap and we'll bring him up here and he can tell you uh, what a game it was. Insane game for the frog. Yes. Uh, that's what table tennis is all about. That is why we wanted to do these live streams to bring you the action live. Sometimes I know that we, when we edit the videos for the TTDSL and things like that, you can kind of, it almost feels like the atmosphere and the pressure is kind of... Uh, false we 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 build it up by adding in insane reactions and adding music you just saw it live that is how exciting this game can be may i ask how important is chiquita flicks at high level table tennis nowadays well yeah obviously it's probably been the biggest change to the backhands um when you watch table tennis in the last decade uh fan Zhendong in particular uh harimoto as well being someone who who plays those backhands when you go back and watch a match say say uh, even Wang Hao and, and uh, Wang Le Chin's day, and Marlin, nowhere near as much pressure from the backhands, whereas nowadays it's all about coming in early with that backhand flick. A couple of ways you can try and stop it. Franziska is, uh, I watched a match the other day where he, I went back and watched the match where he beat Fan Zhendong uh, and tried to analyse what he was doing. And it was abundantly evident, similar to what Frog was doing against David then, was serve short to the forehand. You know Fan Zhendong is going to step. He's going to take two steps right and play the backhand, uh, the Chiquita flick. But at least that way you've made him take two steps and you've also forcing him to cover that backhand table. So you prepare for it and then you try and counter off it. Or you serve long to the backhand uh, because they've already stepped in. And there's a brilliant point. I'll try and clip it and I might put it on the socials later. Uh, Franziska serves at 10 all. And he just reverses and fires it long and it catches Fan Zhendong. So yeah, couple of a uh, couple of ways you can stop it. Thoughts on the hurricane rubbers? Obviously, um, preferred uh, in Asia. Harder rubber. So uh, really about hitting through the ball fast and really whipping through it. Um, for those of us, myself, um, probably Frog in particular as well, slow spinny, uh, not quite as good for us. Um, but yeah, definitely use them. Um, Definitely cheaper than the butterfly products as well. Just realised I've been talking and we've started. Let's go and see if the boys can get this done. We've got someone in the booth. What an absolute roller coaster that was. Yeah, we all just needed a few moments there to uh, <laughs> to take it all in. But yeah, unbelievable match. Um, Tom bringing it back as well and being then match points up and, and losing. So gutting for him. Yeah. Unbelievable timeout as well, called in there. I think it was the third set to yeah. drag it back from like 7 3. Yeah, you could see that you could see that Tom's the way that he was playing with Beth, he was getting a lot of joy um, from mixing the ball up, not playing to the same place twice. That's what we were telling him on the sidelines. And um, and I think he was doing it really well. And then when the game gets tight, you know, the tactics kind of go out your head a little bit. Yeah. So, yeah, but incredible match. Unfortunately, it means that Ormsby got into a 2-0 lead, but that has uh, given us hope that there is something to get from this match. It just shows you how close the level is uh, in this Premier Division. League lead has been taken all the way and forced. To play. What do we got going on in the comments? David Macbeth is playing in the MLTT. Yes, he is playing for Texas Smash. Yeah, really exciting what they're doing over there. Love watching it. Love checking in. Yeah, we'd love to be part of it one day. Yes. You never know. Maybe we have. Yeah, a wild card entry. Be cool <laughs> to link up with uh, Adam Bobro and, and Matt Heverington as well over there. Yeah, definitely. Well, as everyone can see, we've got. Fantastic links to PingPod, those guys out there in the US. So we're, we're very friendly with those guys. So yeah, you just never know what the future holds. But here in this doubles match, it's very tight at the minute. Doubles isn't TTD's strong point, <laughs> but hoping that may change. Although this is a very tough pairing that Ormsby have put out. Tom just missing a counter there. Probably still in his head a little bit, you know, that loss, probably more than a little bit. You know, you can't go from a match like that against a 
a very strong player in David Macbeth. Yeah. You know, England number five professional player there. And then just go straight on again. But you can kind of see it in some of his some of his shots that he's uh, making mistakes on. Four set points then for the Ormsby duo. Oh. Got away with one. Go on. I thought. Well. <laughs> a little bit of a poppy serve. All right. Let's have a look at some of these comments then. Look, uh, who we got in there saying hello to the gaffer? We got Mr. Pocket Rocket. <laughs> hello, PR. It's a shame you're not here with us today. Had to pull out injured in the last week, otherwise he was down to play this one. This is why the founders stepped in to take that number three spot. What do we got? We Amusement Rides has said, what predictions for this whole match? So we always knew it was going to be difficult, didn't we? Um, I think in the back of our minds, probably looking at the match that's closest, probably the Frog versus Ben. Um, ben just yes. being slightly younger and Frog being so good at tactics. Um but always difficult. I mean, Ben's playing yeah. incredibly well. Yeah, it's a shame that that's the last match, actually, because yeah. um, if that match maybe would have been a bit higher up in the schedule today, then, you know, it may have been a, a point on the board for TTD. But yes, we'll see. I mean, that the match that we've just seen against uh, Tom and David, that we weren't really expecting Tom to, to take him that close, yeah. and, and he has. So, you know, who, who knows what's to come? Absolutely. Alvaro has said, Jonathan and Danny are visiting us guys today from Newcastle. We'll have to go down and... Give them some love. Tell them hello. Shout out to them. That has got to be the furthest I've ever seen someone travel for a, <laughs> a TTV match. <laughs> Go back then. The boys. Got Elio serving to Callum, the Welsh Dragon. Managed to get the first point of his second set. Founder warming up in the background as well. That's better from Tom. Getting right over that counter. At this level, it's so important to not block that forehand. When they attack first, they spin. You can't even afford to block it, so you have to go and counter it. Anything that's weak, you know, he's, he's just gonna get gonna get absolutely demolished on that next shot. But this is this is the level, you know. It's, it's hard to maintain that the whole time, as we've just seen there from Tom trying to be aggressive on that backhand. And just going, just going off the table. Yeah. yeah, that's it. You could probably play a safer game and hold the ball on the table, but it's no good when you've got someone like Enio Mendes, who's capable of that. There we go. To just hold, you have to put him under pressure. We're getting lots of comments about where is the chairman. He is probably deep in a fifth set somewhere in London. He's away playing a Vets tournament. Whoa. Come on. Oh, Skylob. The frog buries it. Like a donkey written all over it. <laughs> Maybe if it was a founder or the chairman. Yeah, we'll have to try and get the chairman on FaceTime later. <laughs> the net. Looking, looking a bit better in this set. Yeah. The TTD doubles. Taking a 5 3 lead here. How much does Tom train? He's improved so much. Yeah, he's actually training quite a bit at the moment and he's actively definitely training his backhand and just trying to be more aggressive with it um known a lot for holding the ball and, and kind of out rallying people but now wants to have a few rockets himself i'd like to see the dive there <laughs> straight just, into the umpire table. just off the edge yeah <laughs> anything for a point or oh, risky tactic there from uh, welsh dragon playing it long into david's forehand but getting away with it Got a comment there, thoughts on scouting Chris Duran for Team TTD. Got asked that question earlier. <laughs> Duran, again, a, a good friend of, of TTD's. We played them last month, played against Bats, and he uh, he got the wins against us. Um, yeah, I think, I think his commitments are elsewhere, so I don't think we will see Chris Duran in a TTD top anytime soon. Unfortunately. Yes from the boys here. Four point lead, two points away from leveling it up. Hand signals go down then. So for anyone who's not watched doubles at this level before, the server tends to give a hand signal to his partner to let him know what the serve's gonna be. So let's see what Tom does. Oh, we can't see it. Oh, it looks like he pointed down and then long, which means, oh, 
It doesn't mean serving the net. <laughs> right on cue. Let's no, try and catch any of you can see doing hand signals. So yeah, pointing with your index finger tends to mean backspin. Putting a fist down tends to mean no spin, so a float. And thumb, thumbs up, tends to mean top spin. Oh. Beth's so clean over the table, isn't he? I think that's such a good touch there by yeah. Callum. And Beth just flick of the wrist, gets over the table well. He brought it back. I was going to say 9 all, but have now have now got a set point. So what's that? Five, six points on the trot yeah. for the Ormsby duo as they look to take the second set. Oh, oh. Went for the shot up the line. David there with a big smile on his face. It's a robbery. It's what we like to call a get out of jail free card. The boys had it, what was it, 9-5? Couldn't just get it over the line. It's a tough one to take as well, you know, second set. They were right in that match and now facing a 2-0 deficit. Going into the third, it's going to be going to be hard yes. to see uh, anything but an Ormsby win from this one now. What have we got going on? Full TTD equipment check. We should probably do that, actually, and just post a little bit of a reel every so often of all the team and what, what they're using. It's probably yeah. quite a good, uh, yeah, good video, that. Yeah, I'm sure we'll have we'll have one of the players up, at least one of the players up throughout the match, so we can uh, you can ask that question again yeah. and they'll be able to let you know. Let's go then. So you can see us on the third game of the day, the doubles. What game out of the remaining four guys in the chat are you most looking forward to? We see the founder next against the junior hotshot, Ben. Welsh Dragon then against David. We'll probably be feeling there was uh, a few points that he'd like to take. Founder against NEO and the frog against Ben. Yeah. Yeah, founder playing his second match of the season. We'll see what he can do in the next match coming up. It's a good view, folks. If you serve anything short, David's backhand is just beautiful. <laughs> it's a frog trying to force it long. Makes the mistake. Just steps around so cleanly for that backhand oh. flick. But Beth, yeah. Cappy's looking forward to Tom versus Ben. Yes, final match of the day. If the frog can deliver some of that for me, just showed. Great match. <laughs> David's not scared to uh, send a sky lob up, is he? He's testing the ceiling height, that's for sure. <laughs> if I was any, I'm not sure how happy I'd be about that. 5-1 <laughs> one, then. The Ormsby duo looking a little bit too slick. Lots of unforced errors now creeping into the, into the game by TTD. See what Frog does here. I'm not sure he wants to serve short. Oh, just see it. Flick the edge, but it was still a beautiful technique. I like the confidence from Pocket Rocket there. Found a 3 0 oh. versus Ben. <laughs> the Dwarf's Dragon. Almost saying, what can I do? David's so good. That backhand flick. Someone said earlier we should do a masterclass with him. <laughs> Heavy spin. Heavy spin. Welsh Dragon. Great touch by Anya. Oh, that was a chance there, wasn't it? Round the net roller. Dive. Went for the flick. This game looks dead and buried. I wonder if we're going to see some exhibition stuff. <laughs> Slinging backhands for fun out there. Oh, so good over the table. Really showing his class, David. Just keeps his whole body forward, doesn't he? It's just as. And there we go. Easy as that. 3-0. David and Ennio take the doubles for Ormsby. Puts them up 3-0. Gaffer, what we say, and the founder's on next. Yes, founder's on next. I know that he's really pumped up for this. He was doing multiple at 9am, a whole 
What? It's up five hours before the start of the match today, so he is right up for this. Yes, yeah. I mean, anytime you play a junior, right, it's always your your you know that they're going to be very very good at the rapid fire rallies, right? They do multi ball all the time. It's all they do. So actually, trying to break it up and give them something slightly different, you know, the heavy slow spins, or when you do get into a forehand forehand, slow the ball up, send one down the line, nice and slow. Just try and show them something that they don't see twenty four seven. I mean, Founder is good at slow. He's very He's good very at that, good right? at slow. So it just depends if Ben is maybe a little bit too quick for Founder, but we will see. We'll see what happens. Um, they've both not played yet, so they're both yeah. equally going onto the table cold, as we say. Um, so we'll see who can who can warm up the quickest. We've got a comment there. Angus has said, what's happened today to the Voldner Blade giveaway? We should definitely ask Founder that. Uh, I know he's got that ready uh, to announce who's ready to go. Luca's going to go and board his flight. He was watching from the airport. That is commitment for you. That's fantastic. Uh, I remember Joe played against Team TTD in one of the tournaments. Oh, yeah, I was part of Team One Direction. Uh, we came second in season two. I say we, I didn't play. Um, I was <laughs> captain coaching. the team. Yeah, yeah uh, but I did captain and uh, coached two victories over Chris Duran. So that is my claim to fame. I can't beat him, but I'll get someone else to beat him <laughs> for me. Um, can you tell us how you became part of the TTD team? I actually, we all went to college together here in Bristol. Um, so yeah, we all know each other and we all still live around here. So yeah. How often does the founder train? He, um, in between video editing and traveling around the world as he does, um, training a fair bit. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, he's not a professional um, and he, he trains when he can. Um, this week, when he got the call up, when we knew that Pocket Rocket was going to be injured, he's been training like a pro um, because he wants to give it his all and try and get some wins on the board for TTD. So normally maybe two to three times a week. But this week, I think probably 10. <laughs> so Yeah, I, I heard a rumor that he was in the hall at 9 a.m. this morning doing multiple to try and get ready for this. So, yeah. 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 But it's all about that. If you can start strong start fast and like I say try and try and mix up what you're doing so at least that way you're not giving Ben any patterns then you can start to get some success the thing is founder knows that he's quite a slow starter so he's tried to do something a little bit different today and he's tried to get into the hall early doors and get some balls on the table like I, I admire the the preparation for it um, we'll just see if it's gonna do the job or has he tired himself out so we will I think quickly learn whether it was a good decision or not. Any collabs with Craig Bryant planned? So currently not, as far as I'm aware, there's nothing, but a um, lot of love for what Craig's doing. Obviously the service guy um, has some absolutely unbelievable kickers, but in fairness to him, he's a very, very handy player as well. Um, so yeah, I'm sure we'd love to get some uh, content going with Craig. The question by Put Put when is TTSL season three coming? So we are pausing the TTSL whilst we are competing in this league. Um, so we don't know if there is going to be a TTSL season three at this point. We'll never say never. We loved shooting those uh, those seasons but not right now here we go then and on the serve first oh. Woo. some quick fire forehands there as we said we knew that the number two junior in england was going to be very quick around the table and he's just shown that off of the first point again the founder likes to come in similar to david i guess with that backhand flick but it's potentially some of the wrong stuff to do with Ben if that's all he's seeing again. Seeing a lot of people flick against him. Oof. Tried to mix it up there. Ben then takes the first two points on his serve. There you go. That's that spin. Yeah, straight that's to the middle spin. as well, to that hip. Yeah, so mix of good placement, good spin. And again, he, he did slow it down there. You could see it was starting to get into that quick exchange. But the founder did slow it down into the middle. And again, spin again. Yeah, I think he's definitely going to, if he's going to get anything out of this match, it's yeah. going to be through spin. 
Oh, Ooh. yeah. Big counter. There it is. Let's have a look. Maybe that multiple did help this morning. <laughs> Let's try and catch this again. See what the founder did. Look at that. Look at that. He's got some hook going on there as well. Yeah. The ball spinning outside of Ben's reach. We said when you get that point. When someone spins up against you, you have to take it early. You can't take it late. But the founder did so well there. Oh, and again. Tried the pivot. Yeah. What we got going on in the comments. Micah Williams saying they actually read the comment section. We do. We see you, Micah. Thanks for being with us. Who is the number one junior in England? To my knowledge, it is One Direction uh, team member, Connor Green from season two. Connor actually had an unbelievable win yeah, at WTT Feeder. Ridiculous. Beating uh, Eric Jouty, top 100 player in the world. Season pro as well, you know, absolutely. Yeah. And, and Connor had an unbelievable win there. The great event that Table Tennis England put on oh. the feeder in Manchester last weekend. Hope to see more of those events come into the UK. The first set now we're at 5-5. Five, five. Founder was up and Piggott just coming back, but I'm, I'm liking what I'm seeing from Founder here. Yeah. Mixing it up well. And, uh, and the Orangeview player, he's just, like, like I said before, he's just maybe feeling a little bit cold. Hasn't, hasn't played yet, you know, it's been, been playing since 2 p.m. So it's always a little bit of a slow start. But Founder knew this, and that is why he did that 9 a.m. multi ball. <laughs> that one might have been a bit too ambitious. <laughs> yeah, he was set up for that shot. No matter what was coming, that was what he was going to go for. I like the intent. Ben, very good at changing direction on the ball. So very solid. Went for the angles there. Found her off the table. No chance. Seven all. I think Founder might be able to find some joy here going into Ben's wide forehand. He's playing a lot into the backhand. Like that. Yeah, Again. I think early switch might be something. Definitely the frog in his corner will call for. I'm sure he will, yeah. Beast down there as well now, helping out in the coaching corner, along with Rob Dragon as well. Better intent. Ormsby player, three game points to take this first set. See, Dan started to recognise it. Those final two receives that he tried to send wide forehand. So he is recognising it. Obviously, yeah. just needs to sharpen up on the technique. Just needs to get that ball on. Yes. But as we've seen earlier in the Frogs match, table tennis can just flip on its head so quickly. Yeah, this feels like it's going to be a scrappy short rally game. Yes, I agree. I think in the rallies, favours Ben. Um, seems to be a bit more early on the ball. Nice and balanced between, I think, if Dan is to get any joy, he has to make it scrappy. He has to try and mix the spin every time he plays and never play to the same place twice. Yeah. I think he just, he started well. He was spinning that ball into the right places, into the middle. And then, as you said, Joe, he just started to play a little bit too much to the one place, into that backhand. And, and the Ormsby player just started to read that and, and get his uh, stronger shots in. We've got a comment there. Call Tom to the commentary booth. We're going to try. Um, he's obviously got a couple of matches. Well, he's got one match left to play, um, but it is the final one, so we might be able to get him in next. Um, Potentially, yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll see We'll see how he's doing. I know he's very focused on this match, Tom the Frog, so he may not be able to come into the booth, but we will see what we can do. Again, all into backhand. It's a good serve. Maybe he needs to do a bit more. Spin, actually, that mm. one looked like the kicker. Yeah. Of course, when Dan's been focused on improving his backhand so much, it's better. Going for the wide, yeah, it's mixing the placement up, and then he just had the chance there to to get a bit more aggressive, and you can just see that he's he's not used to that at the moment, and uh, and missing that forehand. Oh, what? 
<laughs> Come on, yeah. Have a look at the replay. Ben with a smile on his face. The founder closed his eyes there. <laughs> I don't know how that's managed to go on the table. Let's have a look. Cool. <laughs> and what you actually missed, oh, in the background was the founder dumping a serve straight into the net. Just seems to be struggling a little bit to focus. Used the force to get that one back. He did. <laughs> Yoda would have been proud of it. That's nice. That's nice from Dan. Staying at the table there, solid block, and mixing it, the placement well. That's a great backhand. I yeah. see Dan now, he's, he's inviting Ben to open up, actually. And he's pushing long, he's pushing deep into the table and he's, he's looking to hold, but it is a risky tactic at this level of the game. It's nice, it's nice mm. again. Spinny, I wouldn't say that there was 100% connection on every ball there, but definitely in this set again, we're at five all. That's well class. That's strong. That's a strong forehand that we rarely see from the founder, but he's got it in his locker. I'm always telling him, I want to see that forehand a bit more aggressive. Hold. Good spin on the half long and then recovery. That's, that's absolutely key. And this is what, uh, when you get to lower level divisions, and I can say that because that's exactly where I am, <laughs> um, you might get your first point you might get your first shot in and then and then you don't recover. I'm just saying that founder's put a serve in the net, which does not help him. Second one this set. Yeah, this almost feels like if it's gonna be backhand to backhand the backhand, it's Ben's game. But if Dan can somehow find a way to go forehand to forehand and then switch the ball, he has a chance at this. Beautiful. The one, two. Yep. That's it. Seems to be Ben. If you can make him step to his right to play the forehand, then you can go back to backhand. Get a weaker shot off that. Oh. Big points. He's doing well. He's doing well on the receive of serve. And actually, he now needs to utilize his serve better, founder. Let's see what you can do. He went for the pivot, but again played everything into that backhand corner for Bem. That was there. That was there. Just rushed it a bit there. I think his eyes lit up. You <laughs> could see it. He just lost all kind of technique there and just threw himself at it. Good from the founder. Again, if you can play the the receive back to Ben's right hip, he's going to take that forehand every day of the week. It's very strong, but if you can prepare for it. Well, he tried to be positive there, founder. He got his flick in, but Ben knew exactly what was coming. Oh, just like that receive. Backhand flick down the line. Executed perfectly. Gives the Ormsby player set point to take this second. Ben does really well to close that out. Really well, because he was behind for a lot of that set. Yeah, that's a tough one to take, because yeah. uh, he was up, I think, for the majority of that set as well. 9-7, and... Um, yeah, I think just it's, it's that loose game. It's mm. that loose game where he's just kind of playing long or just not with enough aggression. Um, and you can see it in the other matches that we've seen already, you know, especially from the likes of David Macbeth. Yeah. You know, he's got such a strong flick that it's very hard to do anything further with that. But Dan's backhand flick that we just saw a moment ago is just coming a little bit too weak. Mm. Yeah, and playing kind of like an 80% flick cross court predictably sets you up for a big counter, doesn't it? A big third ball from your opponent. Yeah. Yep.
I love how uh, critical we are whenever found us on. We're like, he's rubbish. Stop <laughs> serving in the net. Bless him. He gets a hard. He does. He does. But he wouldn't want it any other way, though. Yeah, yeah. He really wouldn't. Um, so, yeah, it's. I, th I think it's all part of it. You know, this TTD is all is all about the founder. So when he plays, you know, we've, we've got to tell him exactly how rubbish he is. <laughs> <laughs> we got some uh we got some comments where's ringer and captain so ringer is in poland for the moment and captain's just taking a little sabbatical from table tennis uh but i'm sure we'll see him again shortly starts off with a long long fast serve early on to player dan does well gets a good spin on there takes that first point Yeah, and he's playing that risky game. I mean, it is working the majority of the time, that long push. Oh! Oh! oh yeah. Better, though. Pin that wide forehand. TTD versus Team Scotland. We basically had that, Lee, <laughs> with North Ayrshire and Drum Trap. That's North Ayrshire. That's, that's two of their international players. And just chucking a Swedish player to, uh, to finish it off. Why is the beast not playing? Well, he plays full time in Germany. And when you play, I'm just gonna stop. Oh. We're gonna see some TTD <laughs> exhibition stuff there, but Founder's taking this set by storm here, goes into a five love lead. Look at his sway as well. It's like the Trolls Morgard sway. Oh, it's a great forehand up the line. Again, does well with, gets the flick in, but it just doesn't have the, the potency, yeah. I think. Um, to, to really make the next shot difficult oh. for the opponent. We'll have a serve off as well. That's him and Tom the Frog now. I don't know, is Callum serving off as well? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I agree with Anthony oh. Quam in the comments here. Founder needs to attack first, but be more aggressive with it. Feel like we need this point. Look at the net. Oh. Oh. Done well though, Founder, because when that ball was up in the air, quite easily hit a donkey. Mm. Seven three up on his serve. Again, just a bit passive. Again, Ben, the first one to change location on the backhand, went at the founder's hip. Founder, I think, if it gets the backhand, the backhand needs to be the one who changes the variable first. So either the spin, the speed, or the placement of that backhand has to be the first to change it. He's getting joy though, going in the forehand. He actually does a much better receiving serve. He wins a lot of his points off of Ben's service points mm. here. Apart from that one. Commentate, commentator's curse that was. <laughs> but let's see if he can prove me wrong. He's 8 6 up on his serve. Let's see if he can use them well. Yeah. I like that one. Looking forward to a bridge block, yes. That's what we need. I'm sure we see it. Oh, oh yeah, needs to, take this. needs to take this set here. You can see his body language a little bit dejected. Mm. Needs to remain positive. Yeah, if he gets in with that flick, he needs to get out quick and then prepare for that rapid fire backhand. When he does that, founders get joy. Great receive. Unlucky. He knew that was there for the taking as well. Disappointed in himself there, the founder. But he does have two set points. 10-8 in this third. Keep this match going. Seven.
serve in practice for the founders needed. Another isn't it? serve return. He was doing the multi ball, but wasn't doing the serve practice this morning. Talking to the bench. The Ormsby player has brought it back to Juice. We're at 10 all. Yes, come on. 10. Yeah, he's ready, ready for that flick. That's good, yeah, yeah. Again, Ben showing great composure to come back into these sets and takes it. 3 0. Ormsby go up into a 4 0 lead. Ben. Kasey showing great fight, great determination, and great tactical awareness to come back late in those sets. Yeah, I think Fowler definitely had his chances there. It's um, yeah, it's a shame he couldn't take that third set and and you know take it to the fourth and get a little bit more confidence yeah. in his game. You could see that he was doing some good stuff here and now and again, but it's it's the consistency at this level. You know, yeah. you have to be consistent as possible, and uh, and you could see there quite a few unforced errors towards the end of that match. And, uh, and yeah, Ormsby have um, taken a 4-0 lead. What's coming up then? Next on the table, a big one. The Welsh Dragon versus David Macbeth. The Welsh Dragon, no doubt, probably getting some confidence from watching the Frog uh, get some joy against Macbeth earlier. It'll be interesting to see the battle of uh, the Welsh Dragon's forehand versus Macbeth's backhand. And then the founder back on in a very tough one, Ennio Mendes. Yeah, that will be a really, really tough match for the founder. But he's got nothing to lose. You know, Ennio Mendes is is a great professional player. Um, the founder is not. So it will be, you know, an experience for the founder. Yeah. And it's almost arguably a little bit easier for him to approach than than the Ben match. This, this young whippersnapper who is uh, Ormsby's number three, who you know is very rapid fire. And actually playing someone who you're not expected to even get to probably six or seven against. You can just go out there and play free and try and get a win against him. Yeah, that's it. I mean, we've got some comments here. Hopefully Ormsby won't win 7-0. Yes, that is the hope. Um, so we know that this one was going to be a really tough match. Ormsby, the current league leaders, um, they've got real squad depth in whoever they put out. And they put out a really strong team against us today. So, yes, we've got three matches left of this fixture. Let's hope that TTD can get at least one match on the scoreboard. Bring in the Dane. He knows how to handle pressure. That boy does not feel pressure <laughs> at all. Um, yeah, uh, Dane obviously not eligible to play for TTD this season. Uh, he plays in Denmark, the same as the Beast, who plays in Germany. When you play in those two leagues, unfortunately, you can't also play in the English league at the moment, in the British league. Sorry, I should say. Uh, hopefully that changes sometime soon. And you can see the Beast and the Dane representing TTD on here. Yeah, obviously our team has changed quite a lot this season. Uh, we brought in... Welsh Dragon, who's about to go up against David Macbeth. Um, but the Dane and Beast are still very much part of the team, as you can see Beast in the, on the bench. Um, but as Joe says, just ineligible to play this season. I've kept it on this view because I'm enjoying watching David's warm-up. Look at his, his elbow up, doesn't move. Yet look at the pace going through the ball. Yeah. It's all his forearm and his wrist. He's a very he's solid figure. He's not the quickest of players, yeah. but when he's in that right position, his shots are incredible. They really are. Especially over the table. Yeah. You know, the flicks over the table, the counters over the table. You know, when he sets that ball up in the right place, he's unstoppable. Yeah, he seems to have such an advantage at this level over the table. Let's have a look. The pocket rocket, confident that the frog will come through against Ben. We hope so. Let's have a look. Anthony, yeah, I agree. Saying some tactics there about the flick across court and then Dan should have been playing the next ball up the line. That's a good tactic for, for I mean, whenever you're creating patterns on the table tennis table, your opponent is always going to clock onto it. So you need to mix that pattern. And even if you don't do it every time, do it once every three, once every two, and then keep mixing. Yeah, always good. Here we go then, the number one clash in match five of this fixture. See David's reverse uh, pinning the ball straight away to the Welsh Dragons right hip. We've got a comparison in the chat. How does the Swedish league compare 
Oh. What a point. Yes, Swedish league, very, very strong, obviously. Yes. Strength and depth there is unbelievable. Yes, Swedish league is a very strong league. Um, comparing it level-wise, yes, probably um, similar to David Macbeth and the founder. Um, Swedish league, very strong. <laughs> Oof. It's contagious. It must be something to do with the balls. Welsh Dragon mixing in some long serves, early doors. Very clever. Well, we know that on a David Stroke, it's his flips. So there's no point just serving everything short because he's just going to get the upper hand off of every single point. So you need to be able to chuck in some long serves every now and again. So we're tied at five all. Avoiding that backhand flick. Yeah, Chuck's on a half long, half long float from the Welsh Dragon. Goes for the long serve again. Mixes it well. Got him on the back foot now. The early switch. The early switch, the long serve to the backhand, and then you fire that next backhand up the line into the forehand. Force David to take two steps back. Callum, we know, has a massive forehand. That, that thing can compete with anyone in this league. Oh, yeah. Good luck there off the net. Sorry. Good. We'll take it. We'll take it all day long. Callum, very underrated at balls that come straight to his hip. Just slightly changes his body. Well, leans back. He's got no fat on him, so that does help. <laughs> he is stick thin as they come. So, you know, nothing getting in the way there. Six. He's in a good lead here in this first set. He's been playing well. You can see that he's definitely come into this match with some tactics in his mind. Again, slightly half long serve so that David can't just step in and lean forward on it. Yeah, you can see he was not 100% certain in the shot that he wanted to play there and ultimately led to the, to the error. Oh! Great backhand. <laughs> Takes the first set. Very good. Again, tactically. Very, very good. You avoid your opponent's best shot. Or if you go to it, it has to be because you want them to play it and then you've counted off it. It's a trap. You have to yeah. set traps. It's a trap. Let's have a look what we got going on in the comments. What are we thinking, guys? Can the Welsh Dragon keep this going? One set up. Who takes this match? Welsh Dragon or is Macbeth able to claw it back? I love it when we get questions of what are TTD players' real names because we obviously call them by their nicknames. <laughs> so he's just a Dane, you know, that is his name. Birth yeah. certificate, Dane. The Dane. <laughs> he's so funny. We um, Behind the scenes, when we turned up to play the Team Sweden match uh, and we told the guys that Team TTD were going to be starting 6 new up, uh, Jun Persson, pro player, very, very good player, said, what, the Dane gets to start 6-0 up? I played him last week in the league and he was 1-0 <laughs> and 7-3 up on me. So, yeah, he's a very good player. But even Jun was calling him the Dane. Yeah. There you go. Someone has supplied his real name in there. It is Daniel Simonson. David just slightly off the pace. Mm. Yes, he's definitely looking like promising signs. For the Welsh Dragon here. So he goes into a long serve. Oh, beautiful. From the Welsh Dragon. Gets forced back, but the important bit, you'll see, he hits the ball and he takes a step forward. See him, gets forced back, forced back, steps in. Yeah. Bang. That backhand counter. He needs to use that more often. Yeah. He's very good. Founder called it last home match. He said Callum's underrated at when 
He's fishing when he's away from the table, able to just put good quality on the ball. Mega Boyd is going to be seeing Macbeth in person at the MLTT. That'd be great. MLTT, shout out to them doing some amazing things. Shout out to uh, Matt Hebrington <laughs> and Adam Bobro as well doing, uh, yeah, doing great work. We should go to France and play the LeBrun brothers. Mm. That would be fun. That would be amazing. Yeah, those guys are ripping it up at the moment. Welsh Dragon. Looking very strong here. Very strong. He's very avoiding, confident. avoiding that short backhand. He is. There you go. Long. And okay, you may eat a big one now and again, but at least you're not suffering at that short backhand flick. Yeah, half long again. Not giving him too much to go off of there. Macbeth, probably an uncharacteristically easy, unforced error there. Doesn't look like he's playing his best in this one, but that could be down to Welsh Dragon's tactics. Chucking it long again. Not giving him those comfortable, over-the-table shots that Macbeth loves to do. Slight apology from Callum there. I think we're about to see some really big slings from yeah. David Macbeth here. <laughs> Doesn't look in the mood anymore. I'll get the replay button ready. Yeah. There it is. <laughs> it's one of them. <laughs> yeah. like you just cannot, cannot let up against a top player like Macbeth. Even right now, 1-0 on 8-4 down, he's still a very dangerous player to come up against. Great change of pace. Really great change of pace. Send the slow one in and then accelerate on the next one. Yeah. If Callum can keep up this intensity, then he's not going to let David back in this match as he goes into a 10-4 lead in the second. Oh, fantastic stuff there from the Welsh Dragon. Takes that one, goes into a two-set lead against David Macbeth. Again, change of pace, take that forehand and accelerate on the next one. Very good. Macbeth, because he's got such good hands, doesn't tend, he tends to plant his feet when he's on the block. Yeah. Doesn't yeah. like to take a back step. But actually, if you change the pace on him, that's then really difficult for him to, to play against. Mm -hmm. Ben says, massive. We've got, how is the captain doing? When will we see him? He is doing great. Don't worry. He's just taking a little break. He was actually down here in the crowd for one of the past home matches. So you'll see him in there celebrating with the team. He'll be back before we know it. Yeah. Let's have a look. Welsh Dragon breathing fire onto Macbeth. He sure is. Let's hope that he doesn't run out of it so that we want to see this match closed out nice and early. A 3-0 win would be fantastic. I mean, we saw it, didn't we, against Macbeth and, and Tom the Frog. You know, Tom, Tom was 2-0 down, brought it back to the fifth, had match points, yeah. and he did lose that one. So we don't want to be seeing that again. Although if it ends up in a win for TTD, I don't really care how yeah. they come. Let's see then. So Macbeth playing a lot into Callum's backhand and Callum pivoting. Be interesting to see if Macbeth starts to target wide forehand. Slight flick of the net. Yeah. This net is seeing a lot of action today. Mm. He sets himself up though there, David, where he gets that reverse in and then he's, he's ready. He's ready for that backhand, and actually, you know, a lot of players would play a forehand from there, but he knows what he wanted to play there. Whoa! <laughs> Smooth as silk. Let's have another look at this. David finding the shot up the line. Predicted the pivot from Callum. Look at this. Callum goes to pivot. Space up the line. Beautiful. Yeah, great shot oh. there from Macbeth. Callum has such a rocket forehand. When he takes, he drops his right foot back and he cracks straight through the ball. All his weight going straight yeah. through the ball. See, a difference there that we're seeing from Callum compared to Tom the Frog there. When he was lifting those forehand half-long serves into Macbeth's... Oh, let's stop talking because it's a great point. Oh. We'll go to the replay. The dragon getting forced back. 
had to stop mid-sentence there after I was watching this one. Look at that. Just keeping that ball in. Good quality always. Not just plodding it back on the table. Always kicking it with something was the dragon. That's a great confidence point as well there for Callum. As David was just starting to get a few swings on. Just starting to get back into the match here. That came up the line's beautiful. Yeah, he's starting to anticipate now the long serve into the backhand. So Welsh Dragon might need to think about mixing up those serves again. Yeah, just like that one, yeah. you know. Half long float into the middle. Good mix of placement. Yeah, he's starting to target that, isn't he? We've got Roger in the chat. Neo sets up all of this streaming equipment. It's the reason why I'm able to swap around these cameras. <laughs> Saying hello. Oh, yeah. Touch just, just bounced a little bit too high there and pounced on by Macbeth. Uh -huh. Again, we're five all in the third set. Are we gonna go, are we gonna see this one go to a four? Looking right idea. Yeah, crunched it. Just did not land. Yeah, so you mix in that serve yeah. and the placement. Not just throwing it long into the backhand now as Macbeth was starting to get used to that. And he's finding a lot of joy off of his serve. The Welsh Dragon here. As we now Equal again at six all. Oh! <laughs> oh! Let's try and get a view of this. Gotta get the replay on that one. Again, you'll see Callum drops his right foot back. Ready? Boom! Oh. Right foot back and he just drills through the ball. Hits the ball so hard. This is neck and neck this third set. I feel like if Macbeth nicks this, yeah. he's going to be right back in it and we're going to go to the fifth. But hopefully, that can happen. Macbeth not taking the opportunity to step on his backhand there. See if he does it again. If the ball goes to the same place. Makes the mistake. Two receive errors. Very deceptive serves there from Callum because I'm, I'm not seeing backspin on that. They look like they're coming over float. Just slowed the ball down there. You see that move? F just slowed it up, played into the backhand, and it just put the timing off there for Callum. And he managed to get that point there. 8 9 in this third. Great receive from Callum. Serve just coming off the side of the table. Sets him up for two massive match points on his serve as well. David just making two service receive errors. Can the Welsh Dragon? Get this done. Absolutely <laughs> loaded. Not on the first one anyway. He's got one more chance here to take it before it goes to Juice. He's going to chuck in the long fast. Oh, Kicks it long. Huge win for the Welsh Dragon. 3-0 against the England number five, David Macbeth, a massive upset, puts TTD on the board. Gaffer. That is a huge win. That is actually a massive win. We, when we're going into this match, we said, David Macbeth, that's two losses right there. Yeah. And and actually, we, we should have had two wins. celebration of the group. That will be a big, big celebration there. Callum, though, able to use that huge forehand that he's got from the backhand side, banging it, and he just put such quality on the ball. And I think he just he just maintained his his positivity, the aggressive nature that he was coming into that game. He didn't really come off of that. And then even when he was off the table, he was just getting that ball back, getting it back in again, and really making it difficult for the Ormsby number one. Absolute mad. We've, we've got some great comments in here. Welsh Dragon is cooking. Let him cook. He is. Year of the Dragon. Amazing win from Callum. Yeah. I think we'll have to see if we can get him in, in the booth yeah. um, after that win. 
um, give my voice a break as well. And I think I'm going to go down and help support the founder up against Enio Mendes in this next match, which is going to be a very, very tough match for him. So I'll say my goodbyes and I will ask Mr. Welsh Dragon to come up. All right. Thank you, Gaffer. Gaffer out. Let's have a look then at the fixtures. So we just saw match number five, Welsh Dragon versus David Macbeth. Up next, the founder with nothing to lose against Portuguese pro top 15, Ennio Mendes. I think we might see quite a good performance here from the founder. Don't get me wrong. I expect Ennio to come through this 3-0, but I think the founder is probably going to be a little bit looser. Won't feel the pressure that he felt with Ben and obviously will be buoyed off of the win that the Welsh Dragon has just picked up. And then the final one, a big one, Tom the Frog playing unbelievably well earlier. Very unlucky not to pick up the victory. Had match points, unable to get it over the line against Macbeth. Will play against the youngster, the junior number two, England international Ben Piggott. Will be a very, very good match. Let's have a look at the comments. Who is better, Gaffer or Joe? Me, but ever so slightly. We play in the same local league team with the chairman, with Dan, with the tech guy, with the junior editor as well. Uh, the founder is going to lose this match for TTD. It's on him to lose, right? He shouldn't get anywhere near this. But that's the beauty of table tennis. Give everything you've got, and at least that way, the boys will still love him when he comes off the table. Let's have a look. Gaff, whereabouts do you live and how far is it? to the ping pod he's just left the building but uh, i can tell you he lives probably about half an hour away from the ping pod so he's up here regularly obviously helps us to run a tight ship here uh yeah what else have we got joe have you been playing in 11 vr yes i have been playing in vr um i actually uh my ranking is i think i'm about 2800 maybe just below so i'm playing in the tournament that's currently ongoing at the moment uh got to meet the vr guys up close and personal at the european championships uh that was held in dusseldorf a few weeks back videos on uh the ttd uh youtube channel uh yeah shout out to 11 they're amazing that game is amazing uh yeah really really enjoying it let's have a look dylan such a big fan Thank you very much, sir. Uh, made your day that we answered your comment. Throw another question at us. We'll get a second one in as well. Where are the Beast and the Dane? They are insane. I don't know if you meant for that to rhyme, Tim. Uh, the Beast is here in the building, um, but he currently plays in Germany and the Dane plays in Denmark. The founder with the early pivot. And yes, so unfortunately for the Beast and the Dane, when you play in either the Danish league or the German league, the rules in Britain are that you cannot play in our league as well. So they are landlocked, unfortunately. And the decision at the moment is because the Danish league and the German leagues are a better standard, it's better for the Dane and the Beast to be playing in those leagues week by week than with TTD. But of course, that always changes. The founder targeting Enio's wide forehand. It's exactly what we asked him to do against Ben, and he started to come in and do it. I'm gonna to cut to Booth, because look who is here. The Welsh Dragon, fresh off a massive victory against David Macbeth. You must be buzzing with that. Yeah, I played, you know, I played really good for three sets before I've played him and it's really difficult. So yeah, great to get over the line as well. I thought he was like clawing his way back into the game. Yes. So yeah, great to get over the line. You know what? He was struggling a lot with your serves and obviously the forehand bomb that you <laughs> just... If you were playing on Call of Duty, your weapon is an RPG. You are just firing rockets all over the place. Yeah, I was, I was, I obviously I've seen him play a lot of times. I know he's got a really good backhand flick and a great backhand. So I was trying to keep him off that. And uh, yeah, just really... You know, take it to him. Yes. Just as we saw there, the founder starting to fly, hitting a backhand and forehand combo. Beautiful. I said it, I suspected that he won't feel the pressure of playing Ennio because there's nothing to lose for him here. We might see a bit of a bit of uh, a good performance. What do we got in 
the comments, the infamous voice. Thank you very much, Zach. Great to have you with us. Do, 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 do. Lots of love for the dragon. What a game, dragon. How do you hit that big forehand? <laughs> big Nick 9 c That's all you need to get it on your forehand. You, Life uh, changer. The ones that go like absolute missiles, you actually drop your right foot back. So your, your feet are almost parallel and you just seem to like push through it right from your feet all the way through. Oh, that's a great backhand. But yeah, your, uh, your technique. Oof. Yeah. Is it something that you're consciously trying to do when you play your forehand? Because you, you tend to change the pace quite well. Are you looking to kill that ball and put everything through it? Yeah, I think obviously it depends on table tennis. Oh, oh the lovely, founder. Lovely point from founder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think with the forehand, it's just, it depends what ball you get from the opponent. But then, yeah, really, if I can try and hit the winner, then that's what I'm looking for, you know? Yeah. Any of them goes up, but better from the founder. Better, looking much more loose, looking like he's trying to play any around the table. What do we got going on? Uh, we got a comment there. What setup do you use? Uh, so I currently use the Super Viscaria ALC and then Dignix 09C on the forehand and Dignix 05 on the backhand. So I've used that for quite a while now. I think I changed probably around this time last year. Uh, so I've been using it for just over a year and really looking forward to it. Yeah. Yeah, it's really nice. Talk to me a little bit about the Welsh rankings. You have been a long-standing Welsh number one. Yeah. And now there's a young whippersnapper <laughs> who is at number one. When are we getting him out of those rankings? When are we getting you back to your rightful place on the throne? Uh, I'd say, well, we have our nationals at the end of March, so hopefully, you know, win that. Yeah, I think that would be my seventh. And then hopefully, yeah, back back to the top. Yes. That's what we want. We'll uh, we'll have to see if you can record it and we can release it on uh, on YouTube because I know all of the guys want to watch you, uh, yeah, watch you play especially in uh, your own backyard. Yeah. Any umpiring courses that TTD Academy provide? Not at the moment, um, but definitely an avenue we could look into if there's a if there's a, uh, a need for it. Currently, all our umpiring courses in the UK are currently run by TTE. Oh. <laughs> look at the founder. Just loosey-goosey playing like he's waiting at a bus stop. This block he played off his hip. Look at this one. <laughs> much more loose, much better to see. Not as tight. The founder should make a bridge masterclass. He definitely should. <laughs> he played good. Yeah, founder. He played really good in that first one. I think he said himself, you know, a little bit of nerves. Like you said, I think, you know, against a player like Enio, there's not going to be any nerves. He's just got to go and enjoy himself in a match like this. Try and do, you know, do what he can. Yeah, he looks like he's enjoying himself out there. And he was very sharp. Flicks in very easy. I was saying to Dan, his serves, yeah, he's, a, he's a great player. Again, I've seen him play before. His serves, are, I've never played against him. And his serves are just so deceiving. You know, he can play short, long, he does little kickers, anything really. He's got in his arsenal. And his, oh, not that one. Commentator's curse. <laughs> a brilliant player. Yeah, you've got to be a good player to uh, rank as highly as he does. I think he's top 15 still in Portugal, and Portuguese very strong. The group that they have there, the kind of five or six at the very top. Might be a little bit ambitious, that one. Oh, we go for a chain and clump on our back end then, Founder. <laughs> got to be good to rock those uh, leggings that he's wearing as well, I think. <laughs> only, only a certain level. Oh, the chop block. Oh. Founder went through it. 5 7, he's not out of this. Two good serves now. Oh, oh went straight down. Maybe getting a little, uh, a little humid. Oh. He loves the front shot blocks, Daniel. He's been playing a few of those the last couple of balls now. And we got a comment there 
and Mr. Peter Butcher. Welsh dragon, proud of you, Callum. I understand you might know him pretty well. <laughs> yeah, it's great, great to see that they're tuning in. I think obviously with the stream being so good, I think you know it's easy for all, yeah. all people to to tune in and yeah, great to see that he's supporting me. That's the granddad dragon for anyone <laughs> who wondered. Yes. I have the... to go and pay him a visit when I get back. Yeah. Let's have a look. Rosina is asking, uh, when you return to Macbeth, were you trying to deaden the ball down the middle? He seemed to be going long or having a hard time with your returns. Yeah, so what we were saying in the booth was that Macbeth's strength is that short, when the ball's over the table, short on his backhand, he comes in. Yeah. It looked like you were actively trying to avoid that. Yeah, yeah, like I said, his backhand and his flick as well is, is excellent. He can take it from, you know, anywhere on the table. So I was really just trying to get that out of the game and just try and play, you know, forehand or middle as, as much as I could. Yeah. Good to see Pocket Rocket tuning in. He is. Well. He's been here the whole time, no doubt. Great to see. Great Gritting to see. his teeth with all of the uh, <laughs> big points that have been going on. I bet his neighbours are probably wondering why he's screaming at the TV. <laughs> Ennio's obviously got a very spinny first open up because everyone has just been kicking it long, in, in, including in the doubles as well. Yeah, I said to Dan before the game, you know, it's, try and get him, try and get him wide for him. It's just so difficult. You know, he plays everything so relaxed from that back end court, and he just, yeah, you always just seem to play the ball. This it's difficult to get away from it, yeah. but he's just so relaxed when he's playing. It's, yeah, it's good to see. All oh, round the net. <laughs> Flicked up, so we know it hit the edge of the table. Enio's point. I would have hit the instant replay if that one had gone on. What we got going on in the comments? Does the TTD team have a massage therapist? Oh! I'm doing well. Uh, Unfortunately, they do. So a bit of behind the scenes knowledge. The team massage therapist is actually the German's girlfriend. She gets the boys. She sorts them all out, gets all the aches and pains done, especially like a day tomorrow. And he just looks like he's on cruise control, doesn't he? Yeah. Knows he's not really in much danger. Dan's sticking in there back in the yeah. back end, which is great to see. <laughs> Served in the net. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, it doesn't look like there's yeah. much spin, but it's just, yeah, it's absolutely loaded with spin. Yeah. It's really difficult to receive those serves. The founder putting the ball in the net more times than Erling Haaland at the moment. <laughs> Here we go, then. Are we going to get some exhibition from Enio? Oh! <laughs> Big smile on his face. Professional win is what I'll call that from NEO. Didn't take Dan for granted, but still just maintained enough control that he got through it 3 0. Let's have a look what we got going on. How does the US rankings compare to the UK rankings? I don't actually know. That's a very good question. Uh, we'd probably have to have a look at some of their players and compare against where we think they'd end up. Uh, Harry Doherty is the current Welsh number one. He is, yeah, training. Every day out of Grantham at the moment, but there's a there's a comment there. But Callum is better. <laughs> we'll see at the end of March. We will see. Yeah, it'll be a great game. Yeah, let's have a look. Adrian, yes, uh, my grandparents were actually from Poland. Came over at the end of the war. Uh, what rank is Dan in the UK for seniors? I don't actually know exactly what rank he would be, but I would estimate he's probably around the sixty or seventy mark. I would. Have yeah, thought. I think so. You, I think. You would just have to look at his wins, maybe, yeah. and so he probably hasn't played many tournaments, so it might be a little bit in it. Like you know, it could be a little bit incorrect, but I yeah. think just look at who he's played this year. I think probably sixty seventy is about correct. Yeah, yeah. absolutely right. Let's have a look. We have one final match, match seven, the big one. Tom the Frog up against 
the England junior number two, Ben Piggott. This one is going to be a big match, especially if Tom can bring some of that form from his earlier match into this one. I'd expect quite a lot of rallies. Uh, ben obviously is going to be very good in the rally as well. Juniors always are when they're multi-balling 24-7. They're going to be very good at that rapid fire. Uh, we'll have to see if Tom tactically can start to work out Ben. Founder was getting a lot of joy earlier when he was going to Ben's wide forehand. Yeah, yeah, I think we, yeah, we said straight away, you know, He's got an exceptional forehand, you know. Yeah. He was great on the counter as well. So I think with Tom, if he's getting in first, he's got to get in strong. Yeah. Look to you know look to be really aggressive after that first ball. But uh, yeah, I think it'll be a great game. Fireworks expected. Yeah. Let's have a look. What do we got? The match is almost over, and it only felt like a few seconds. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes how how it goes. Uh, have you ever had one of those matches where you prepare mentally for it all weekend, and then it finally comes, and you do all the warm up, and you've got the music in and your headphones and you go on and play and then it's like five minutes later you're done and you're off yeah if I, <laughs> after the first two sets against Enyo I thought I thought it was going to be one of those the third was a little bit closer but yeah you know I've had them plenty of those in my career yeah. you know, where, where I'm sure should... you've dished out more than you've had though I'll be honest <laughs> felt like chairman against yeah. uh, felt like chairman against Enyo <laughs> chairman yeah that's that's a great you know what i might try and do i might try and message the chairman and just see if we can get him on facetime he'd probably have ptsd from looking <laughs> at your face though if i'm being honest let's have a look what we got going on in the comments why don't we play on two tables like other british league sides put simply because it'd be more difficult to stream and you guys would miss matches really um space obviously at the ping pod would be a little bit uh, of an issue as well we'd have to shorten the court um but yeah we want to stream this and it seems to be going really well and people seem to be enjoying it uh i think we're ready for the first set ben serving us off Yeah, really spinny forehand from Ben. I think I think Frog's going to have to get really consistent in this game. But I think it'll be a great game. Yeah, there we go. I think that first spin's going to be really strong. It's going to be tight. I think it'll be really tactical, this game. Maybe not so many rallies as you'd expect, but more more tactical along, along the best of five. Great comment there. Ben really reminds me of Kai Stumper. Yeah, he does. Built the same way. Plays a very similar game. Hits the ball very early. One Oh, great rally. Ben just going through the ball flat. Knew that the frog had committed to the backhand side. Five points on the spin then for Ben. He does like that pivot though, Ben, doesn't he? Yeah. Like you say, I think if Tom can get him wide forehand, it's a massive area where you can get cheap points, I think. Mm. Yeah, better send him wide forehand. Tower breaks every six points. The guys will go to the uh, towers, just take a little time to compose themselves. Great service. Here. Yes, there you go. We saw it. The pivot. The frog just picking it. Show you what we mean. So, Ben, anytime the ball is anywhere near his right hip, it's going to take the forehand. And he's going to have to lean back if he doesn't move his feet. That leaves the opening for the frog to send it up the line. Tom. 
So I think really tactical. I think he knows Ben's got a good forehand, so it's just trying to contain it and then you know use that space when he's got that space open. There we go. A little bit of luck. Three set points then for the frog to take this first set. Oh, great shot. Beautiful shot, straight up the line. Two saved from Ben. Needs one more. One more to go to Juice. Not what he needed a 10 9 up. Look at the net. See what Frog does. I wonder whether he's going to go the long, fast serve. Oof. Stays with the short backspin. Gets it done. Just over the line. Yeah, really big, I think, for Frog to take that first set. Again, against juniors, if you let them get momentum and feel good. Yeah, that rhythm. I think that rhythm yeah. is massive for them. Like you said, they probably practice a lot of hours. So as soon as they get that rhythm, yeah. it's really hard to stop it. So yeah, that's a massive set, especially from being 10-7 up and then being dragged back to 10-10. What do we got going on in the chat? I feel like a lot of amateur players underestimate the importance of towel breaks. What do you think? Yeah, exactly right. So again, a lot of amateurs just rush through the games. They're not really thinking tactically. They get the ball, they rush, they serve. They, yeah, um, Always important to just stop uh, and take a moment, break your opponent's momentum, but also think about where did I last play the ball? What serve did they do last? What can I do? Pocket Rocket in there, Frog the Doctor. We might have come up with a new nickname or, <laughs> or Dr. Frog, PhD in tactics, always, yeah. Uh, and then Dylan's asked, can we do a review of the Lin Yun Ju ZLC? Yeah, always good. Always good to get a review uh, of the uh, blades that are coming out. Always difficult to, I think Dan and Tom probably find a difficult way to describe a blade. Yeah. Like, it's fast. <laughs> what does exactly. it mean? Though? Yeah, yeah, no. That must, yeah, that must be really difficult. <laughs> Flick of the net. Good though from Frog. Changed the pace on the backhand. Held the first one, then sped up on the next one. Flick of the net there as well, by the sound of it. Oh, it's oh, a nice. big point. Let's watch it back. That's a great shot. Frog getting caught there with the deep one. Gets the forehand in. It's on the frog then off to an early lead. 3 1. What a counter. Yes, it was. That is exactly what I've seen Tom working on recently with these backhands, being more aggressive with them, not just playing them onto the table. You look at these, each one aggressive, aggressive, really good. Can't afford at this level to be passive. That's a great backhand himself though from Ben. Straight up the line as well. Yeah, I think with a lot of touch play as well, you can mm. see both taking the touch really early. I think that first spin is so key. Whoever gets in first seems to be winning the majority. Yeah, they seem to be winning the majority of the points. So, I think, yeah, good touch, good first spin is really important here. What's the uh, problem when you come up against someone who's got a really good short touch against you? What kind of problem do they present to you? It's just. It's difficult to keep them out of the game, like especially if, if they're good on the first ball as well. You know, mm. it's, it's it's difficult to keep them keep it tight, especially if they've got a good good touch themselves. And then yes, yeah, it's, it's almost like target practice for them if you know they got a good touch on a brilliant third ball. Oh, oh, oh. world class on the run, chopped it in half like a chef.
Like he's playing Fruit Ninja. <laughs> Flick of the net as well. Did well. Oh! That's got to go on Ben's Instagram later. Another big point. That's another big backhand. Frog doing well, though, manoeuvring Ben about, forcing him to take two steps backwards and then making him run side to side. Huge hello from China, Shanghai. Hello, welcome. Oh, There's some great games already. Ooh. Quick turn there from Frog. Mm. Clever. Just nearly executed nearly executed it. If Frog loses this next point, do you think you call a timeout? Potentially, yeah. I think, you know. Oh, oh there we go. I think 2 0 as well, like you said, if we, if you two nil up on Ben, you're you you again you're on top of him, you're stopping that rhythm and just getting you close to that win. 1-1, one, one, you know, he might get a little bit of momentum back and it could be more difficult for Frog, so... But he takes a 2-0 two, two lead here. Oh, oh lucky, unlucky. The setup was beautiful. 10-8 then. Ben with two serves to save this set. Excellent touch. Very underrated touch from the frog. Takes it 2 0 up in this one. We got some comments. Uh, hi from Malaysia. Hi from the Netherlands. Oh, Cow, do you think you would stand a chance against a prime Ryan Jenkins? The Grand Prix King. Yeah, I don't know. It's difficult to say. I, I don't know. Probably, I'd say I'd probably back him. You know, he was in the, he, I, was, he was a crazy good level. I think, I think he's obviously being quite old, a little bit older now. I don't think I ever saw him at his prime. That's the difference. I think as I was getting better at the game, you know, he was sort of on his way out. So I yeah. think that's that's the main difference. Uh, when you said then, I'd probably back him. I honestly thought for a second you were going to say, I'd probably batter him. <laughs> no, he's a very, I mean, he still is an absolutely wonderful player. And even better coach, saw him at um, feeder. Was he helping the guys um, to some big results, uh, the UK guys? What we got going on? Zanzibar in the house as well. Can we come to California? Yeah, we see lots of the um, content that's going out from America. Uh, hopeful that Dan's got a few irons in the fires with the <laughs> MLTT guys and obviously with, uh, with Pingpod as well. All right, guys are back on table. Third set, the frog 2-0 up. Great long serve from them. Early doors. Is there a height advantage in ping pong? Interesting. So the height, in my opinion, is more of a disadvantage when you are a beginner. So the further away generally your head is from the table, the more difficult it is for your brain to work out things like the bounce on the ball and the pace on the ball and the spin on the ball. So you have to get down nice and low. But someone like Stefan Mengel, who I saw the other day, who's a monster, it does come with, tends to come with longer arms, which means a longer wingspan. Yeah. Um, so you tend to see those guys take a back step and just cover off almost everything. What do you think? Height an advantage or a disadvantage? Yeah, I think probably the same as you. I think as a beginner, you know, if you're extremely tall, it's, it may be difficult to judge that bounce. But yeah, you're probably better on the table. You know, maybe your forehand flick or your backhand flick is a little bit easier. Even now these days, you know, you see people taking a lot with their backhand flicks. So if you're taller, that might be a little bit easier for you to reach with that uh, extra wingspan. Dylan's asked, how can most rackets use the black and the red for the colours? So most of the oof, frog looking like he might just be dipping, then starting to capitalise. Um, yeah, a lot of the coloured rubbers that have come in, obviously butterfly, arguably the most popular uh, rubber in Europe, certainly. Um, and then Steger behind them uh, haven't released any coloured rubbers. So anyone that you see with Dignix or Tenergy, their only options are uh, black and red. And then some of the other rubbers that have come in, the Andros and the uh, Jewelers that have come in. That's where you tend to see people using the coloured rubbers. And then, four point advantage, gets to 8 4 in this third set. Struggling on that heavy backspin serve, causing the frog issues. It's obviously absolutely loaded. 
Oh, what a backhand. Great shot from Ben. Wow. It's a great shot. Just cracks straight through the back of it. I think it's been quite a quick set as well. Yeah. Normally, like we were talking about the towel breaks, you know, I don't think I've seen anyone take a towel break. A lot of the serves, I think, have been like, you know, long serves straight into the rally. Yeah. So I think maybe Tom, you know, after this next set, needs to go back to the, you know, go back to where he was winning, touch, touch, exactly. get in first. Yeah, I mean, anything that's fast and where a junior doesn't need to necessarily think as much is bad news for you. You want to try and make them, give them as many variables to try and work out as possible. So yeah, things like towel breaks, timeouts, use them, just break momentum, try and get it out of that cycle of rapid fire table tennis, because that is where Ben and the likes of Connor uh, Green as well, they'll really flourish in those rapid fire. Yeah, it's what they practice a lot of, isn't it? Yeah. You know, they're going to be strong in those areas. So you've got to try and get, get as far away from it as possible. Yeah, absolutely. Peter asks, how do you beat pushers? It's a good question. It is a good question. I think the first thing that I always try to teach my lower um, ability players is you have to learn the dark side. So you have to be able to push yourself because what that then allows you is if you wanted to, you could out push them. You could play them, start at half seven in the evening and finish at midnight because you're just pushing. And then that will also allow you to recognize when you get a weak push and that's the one you then attack. You spin yeah. up on it. I think it's underrated as well. Sometimes people forget that, you know, if you've got a strong push or like a very heavy push. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Fourth point to kick us off. You can win so many points from just doing, you know, a strong push wide forehand or a strong push into the middle. And yeah, I think it's quite an underrated shot. Just like that. Yeah, bring, it was a good one. Bring him one way and then take oh. him the other way. Oh, Oof. oh unlucky. Ben, picking out. The uh, tricks out of his bag. Scoreboard on the uh, screen has got it wrong. Froggy in a two love lead. Heavy spin goes up three love. Like using this view to see the depth on the serves to see if they're to see they're long. Whoa! Great forehand. Is David your best win? Got to be one of. Yeah. It's up there probably with the chairman, right? <laughs> oh. Great. Oh. One time. Oh, one time. Time. oh. oh what a fight. What a fight. Diving through the air like Superman. What a point. That's that great long push you said about. Yeah. Ben just all over it. What a dive. What a dive. <laughs> Not seen often in table tennis, but what a dive that was to get a ball. Dylan said there's not many donkeys in the SBL. That was one of them. That was a potential donkey there, sorry. Ben doing really well to just bang through the back of the ball. We're getting some love for the camera angles, for the comments, for the coverage. Thank you very much. Frog just being a little bit passive now. Ben getting in first. And what we mentioned earlier about what you cannot afford to do is just hold the ball on the table. Rob needs to start trying to counter these. Yeah, he's too quick, isn't he, Ben? Yeah. You know, he's, he's really struggling to contain him a little bit now. I think Frog's got to look to attack himself to get back into this game. I'm sure he would love to see it out 3-1 rather than go into that dreaded fifth set. That's, That's better, better yeah. yeah. Again, if you know your opponent has a really good flick and is likely to attack, you can use that as a trap. Send a topspin serve in, knowing your opponent's going to attack it, and then you counter off that. There we go. Better. It's almost like he's listening to you. <laughs> he's got he's got earphones in and he's listening. <laughs> got a couple of questions there. Can you just round off what equipment you use again? Equipment. So Super Viscaria ALC flared handle. So I've been using that for about a year. And then the Dignix 09C on the forehand with Dignix 05 on the backhand. So I've been using that, that equipment for just over a year and I really enjoy it. That 09C is a little bit of a different feel to, to what I used to use. And yeah, it's just you know great for first top spins, great for counter top spins. And yes, really, really enjoy using that equipment. I wonder if you find the same thing with Dignix. It really rewards you for being brave. It's quite a safe rubber, but if you go at the ball, 
it, it, it holds on the table very well. Definitely, yeah. Fantastic combo. And then 9-6 up in this fourth. Oh, oh, Ben with the smile on his face. <laughs> you knew that was a good Gonna shot. Going to go to the Sweet replay. Boy. We might miss the final point of this set, but I want to show that backhand up the line. Beautiful. Oh, that's a great shot. <gasps> we join it back at 10-7. Frog then taking two points on his serve. Ben has two serves to take this match into a fifth decider. Werner Schlager, one of the best ever. Absolutely. World champion. We're going to be filming something with him very shortly. A big spin from Tom. I feel like that. It's a good ploy as well. Slow, heavy spin. Just yes. mix it up. It's been a lot of fast, fast. So that change of pace can be massive in a match like this. Oh, oh. very lucky. Dribbled over the net. 10-10. Frog pulls it back. Very good. Has to counter off that flick. Ben has a great flick. He's going to get it into the point, but you have to be ready for it. See what the frog does here. Does he try and touch short? Or does he bang long? Oh. He went for the touch short. See here then. Does he allow Ben to come in with a big flick and then try and counter off it? Oh, no. Try to avoid it. Tried to serve short to forehand. Big point then. Oh. That was that long push that you mentioned earlier. That yeah. aggressive one where you come in and just chisel it out to wide forehand. Yeah, definitely underrated as you can see as well. As soon as Tom does it, he covers a lot of the table with his backhand so that he can get a strong block straight away behind it. Got to be aggressive here. Oh. Went for it. Ben, very good at picking these half long serves. Service practice for TTD, definitely. The amount <laughs> that have gone in the net today. Should be some fines dished out, I think. It's another great one. Another heavy, heavy forehand push. I'm surprised to see there's not been many like float serves or top spin serves. Yeah. Like you said, it's a lot of, you know, heavy back spin, a lot of flicking. You'd think that maybe Ben would put one long and see what Frog does to it. I wonder if Frog's going to try a long, fast serve on this next one, if he can get to it. Ben serves well. Takes it into the fifth. All for the Frog to do then. Feel like he has to mix up that service game. Um... Possibly go to a couple of kickers. Just mix it up. Ben seems to be quite comfortable now with the pendulums and the reverse pendulums coming short over the table. Yeah. Yeah. Let's have a look. Joe, you jinxed it. <laughs> <laughs> yep. It happens. I have to stay on mute next time. Let's have a look. What's Afro saying? Played a game yesterday. The other guy had like 40 next serves. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's nothing. It's almost... Nothing worse than your opponent just doing let serve after let serve. The only thing that's worse is if it's you just doing them. You're like, oh my goodness. Like, <laughs> why does it keep happening? Yeah. Tom needs to start being aggressive uh, as the passive game isn't quite working anymore. I agree. Yeah. Has to either try and take the opportunity to attack first. So maybe come in and flick a couple into clever places. Um, we know that Ben is going to create the pattern. If you aim at his right hip, he's going to take the forehand. So maybe flick into there, knowing that you'll play the the, the kind of half pivoty leaning back forehand, yeah. then counter that up the line. I think like you said on the other point, you know, when he's aggressive with that flick, he can be aggressive with the backhand as yeah. well. That's the difference. I think that he was just a little bit more like blocking and punching, yeah. not so many top spins. Is there a rule on the number of lets? There's not, no. That's a clever one into that hip. Where is your club based? Uh, this ping pod is in the southwest of England, uh, in a place called Bristol. Slightly lucky one. That's what the frog uh, showed with his head uh, head movement there. Just drifted it slightly long into the middle of the table. 
Oh, I called it earlier, the fast serve. Got the right result. In a really uh, poppy receive from Ben. Has to possibly try and flick on one of these short touches. I think he's pushed a lot wide forehand as well now, maybe yeah. try and get into his middle, try and get into wide backhand, you know, mix it up a little bit so he's not always anticipating that push by yeah. forehand. Variety is massive in table tennis, you know, different serves, different placements, different spins. Yeah. You've got, to, you've got to try and use them all to, your, to the best of your ability. That's part of it, isn't it? It's trying to predict what your opponent is thinking, trying to predict what they are thinking about you and what you've recently done, trying to stay one step ahead. Yes, <laughs> it is really difficult, but that's what you practice for. Oh, oh that would have been good. That would have been good. You went for it. Bob just looking a little bit down in his body language. Normally that one would receive a massive choke. Just saying they're so wet. Might be struggling with the uh, humidity. Have to adjust then. Have to try and spin those up slightly higher. Five four then. Ben takes the early lead in the turnaround in the fifth set. We still have timeouts for both of these players. Yeah. Be interesting to see where they get used. Have a look. Is there going to be a ping pod in Europe, in London? We hope so. We... Oh. Slight flick of the net. Then did really well for it not to push him, put him off. Frog though, just trying to hold there, needs to counter. I think as well on the on the video, I don't think the video does Ben's fine justice. You know, we saw him warming up earlier. Yeah. He's got incredible incredibly strong shots. Lots of spin, lots of power. Yeah. So you know, it's probably quite hard for Tom to contain it exactly where he wants the ball to go. Great tip. Good yeah, mix-up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Change that pace, like mm. you said. Kind of play that slow spinny ball rather than fast all the time. is Ben's current UK ranking. So he is currently number two in the juniors in England. Not sure of his seniors, but he would be very high. Yeah, I think we looked yesterday. I think they're quite similar ranked. I think maybe both around 25 in England. Yeah. Oh, good front dog. Good front dog. Time out called. He was six. Time out from, yeah, from TTDs. Interesting. Would have thought that would be Ormsby's time out, but... The frog coming in then. So won a few points there by slowing the pace down whilst they're in the rally. Yeah. Sending a slow spinny one in. It just makes Ben make that decision yes. of do I block it? Do I counter it? And it just Absolutely. gives Tom a little bit more time to get around that court, I think. Yeah. And a lot of these players you'll find are really good at stepping backwards to adjust to the more pace coming at them. Less so, it's more difficult to judge. He's played a slow one. I need to step forwards onto yeah, this ball. Yeah, definitely. You just ask a slightly different question. Let's have a look. Uh, Bar. How many TTD players are sponsored? That's a good question. I actually don't know the answer to that. This game could go down to juice as well. Yeah, it looks like it might be going that way. TTD, please buy towel boxes. <laughs> I know we keep saying it to Dan and the gaffer. We'll say it again. Don't you worry. Yeah, they don't call Tom Professor Maynard for nothing. That is true. He's got the PhD in tactics. C. Then on the serve then to level this up. Or can the frog take a two point advantage? He went for the slow one. Oh, that's good. Counted. Yeah. Counted immediately. Yeah. 8 7 up. This game is close as it can be. Can't afford for a drifty serve. I think that's what Tom's saying there. <laughs> Ben's forehand just too clean, too powerful. I wouldn't want to see another 13 11 deuce <laughs> loss for Frog. So hope he can get it to 9 9. Big advantage with the saves at 9 9 in the fifth. 
Two serves to save it. And Ben takes it. A five rounder. And Ben Piggott gets the win over the frog. Does very well to pull that back in. Upped his aggressiveness. Started to get in more. Started to dictate those rallies and yeah. uncork power at the frog. Yeah, I think, like you said, Frog just got a little bit stuck in his ways with that passiveness. And sometimes once you're stuck in it, it's really hard to get out of it, you know? We said juniors once they get in that rhythm. Yeah, exactly. It's so hard to get out of that rhythm. I think that was the difference, yeah, from 2 0 down. Once he had that rhythm, it was a little bit of a different game. Two uh. heartbreakers for Frog. <laughs> exactly. Let's have a look. Pocket jinxed it. He did. He did. He said that the Frog was going to win 100%. Can we make a video with the Neo Faso? Yes. The beast was well up for that. Uh, yeah, we'll get that in. I think what we're going to try and do is get the founder up here to give us a goodbye message to map out what the next matches are as well and when you can next expect to see TTD on your screens coming up. We Let's have a look at the, at the comments. Have we got any final questions? Such a great stream and so much fun. Yes, this is what I mean, right? The streams were two and a half hours. If we went across on two tables, it'd be over before we know it. It'd be a 15 minute, 15 minute video. Frog lost mentally. I think he was starting to struggle. You saw him looking down at his bat a few times. Confidence, maybe it got a bit humid in there. Sometimes when you go to spin it and the ball drops off, it can sometimes uh, affect you. But yes, two, uh, two really close matches. Always frustrating to lose in the fifth. Yeah. Just having a look and seeing who is coming up. Joe, I would like to know the equipment that you use. Good question. I use the Apollonia uh, ZLC as my blade because I need a bit more pace. I'm a bit slow and spinny. Uh, and then I have Tenergy 05 on the forehand and Dignix 05 on the backhand. I've recently changed to that. And yeah, yeah I'm finding that if you actually go at the ball... It really does, yeah. It keeps the ball on. It's nice. Yeah, it's a good. I think it's a good change. I think, uh, yeah, I think the Ten Joe Five. So many people still use it, so it's yeah. clearly still a great rubber. It's just that Dignix O Five is a little bit of a different sponge, and maybe, like you said, when you go when you go for a little bit more, it makes that slight difference. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, Apollonia is very fast. Yes, I'm liking the fast. I I actually changed from a very slow blade, so it's quite good. Uh, we got a couple of questions asking about when the match is next on. Let me just line that up for you because we have a graphic. Let's click it. I'll open the door. I think someone's trying to get it. You can see then. So, Ormsby, February the 10th, that is when we're here. We are then away at Brighton for the next match on March the 9th, the only place to check that away match, which features at Brighton, England international player Tom Jarvis is on TTE.tv. You have to sign in and watch the away games there. The gaffers just come in the booth. Do you want to say a goodbye before we end this stream? Say a quick goodbye. Yeah, tough one to take. And... Uh... You know, there was that match with Tom and David. If that would have gone TTD's way, maybe it sets the, sets the mood a little bit more positively. But yeah, and that last one there, um, tough, tough for Tom. But, you know, a 6-1 defeat to the hands of Ormsby. We're kind of expecting a, uh, a similar result there. But as uh, Joe was saying, we've got one last match in this round of matches before this league splits into two mini leagues. The top four teams going to the top half, the bottom four go into the bottom. So there we go. There we go. All right. Uh, keep an eye out for socials that will go out. Lots of videos that will go on there. As always, if you haven't kept up to date, the latest video that's on the TTD channel is the pros versus public challenge in New York City. If you think Dan had a rough time today, he had a rough time over there, let me tell you. Other than that, thank you to everyone who's commented. Sorry if we didn't get to uh, answer your question. We feel the love. We love you. We'll see you soon. Peace out from TTD.
Yes guys, so we just want to take a quick break from this stream to shout out to our partners, BetterPlay.ai. Now BetterPlay is an awesome website which highlights your full match down to just the points played. We're going to be using the software to edit this stream and release it as a highlight form, so stay tuned for that. So guys, if you want to improve your table tennis today, head over to BetterPlay.ai or click the links in the description for more.